Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing tonight? Woo. Look at that fade in. How's everyone doing? Overlay's already bugging out and we just got started. Uh, blah, refresh cache, there we go. How's everyone doing today? It's, it's Friday, no, Saturday night and I feel all right. Yeah, look, it's tall boy and it's coral plasty covered in dust goodness. Ah, uh, in for a treat, in for a treat. It's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be fun. It's so dark in there, it needs leads. Why do we need lead? Lead poisoning is bad for you. I got plenty of light. Oh, in here. Yes, that's on the list. That's on the list. There's, I found some, I've got some uh, daylight sticks that are going in here. Um, I didn't bring them up here, but that's okay. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a fun, fun build series. So let's get the music going. Do I got the music going? I already got the music going. Sweet, cool, awesome, possum. Um, Tallboy looks so much bigger on a table in the garage. It does, but here's the funny thing. Um, Tallboy apparently has less Zed than the, uh, the VZ bot we're building because Tallboy is uh, frame height. What is that? A little over 26 and a half inches tall. Yes, we, we use Imperial here. Um, where the VZ bot is frame height 24 inches tall. Um, now, granted, the VZ bot has the tool head sticks up past the top of the frame, and then you have an umbilical coming off of it. So you gotta put a top hat on it, so that adds a little bit more. So there may be height comparable. Um, this is 330, it's on the ground, I know I'm pointing at it. The, the VZ bot is 330 on the XY, and the frame is 21 inches. This is 19 and a half inches, and it's 330 as well. So a Voron is more space efficient on the XY and the Z if you, plan on enclosing a VZ bot. So um, this is only 380 on the Z, I wanna believe. I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll have to see, cause I, you can see it's already pretty much at max Z height there. I can go like another inch or two. Um, let's see, yeah, it, it's, plus I got a Rapido in here. Yeah, you, you got like what, 14 and a half inches of Z? So it depends on what hot ends you're running and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so I have really no idea how long this series is gonna be. Um, I've, I've got no like, it, this is kind of like, this is something I've been meaning to do with this printer for a while. Um, I've been collecting upgrades. So first things first, uh, these are linked in the video description. They're not affiliate links or anything like that. Uh, the first thing we're putting in here uh, one, if you, if you notice, I gotta walk all the way around the printer to show this off. It's got dual MGN nines, okay? It's got dual MGN nines here. This is V2.4. Like, it's just V2.4. Um, you can see like the, the, the tensioning screw here for the front idlers isn't in line with the belt path. This is straight up V2.4. Um, in fact, I think this was the first printer we built on stream. Let me actually pull up my, my YouTube channel. Uh, I, I can't remember if it was this. Yeah. Uh, this tall boy was the first thing we did on this channel. Um, as, as a, oh my God, look at, look at the setup. Look how sketchy it was. Very first live stream three years ago was we tore this down, it was a 2.2, and we tore it down, when was this? May of 2020, ugh, ugh. Anyways, um, time flies when you're having fun. Um, I, now, you may notice it does have stealth burner in there, okay. So, uh, this what this is 2.4, I did upgrade the controller in it at one point and put stealth burner in it at one point, um, but the, the actual motion systems is pure 2.4. Um, so yeah, who's playing Baldur's Gate? I was before I went live. Um, I'm on playthrough number three right now. Well, technically 3.5, because I've got kind of two playthroughs I'm working on right now. Um, so where are those little containers go? I'm gonna use these. Um, so we do have some plans. So the first thing is tap. I'm sticking with, this doesn't have tap. I want tap, so we're putting tap in here. So 
Um, I have these. The link for these is in the video description. I can't remember what the Etsy store is called, uh, but it's down there. Somebody put it in chat. Uh, but they were gracious enough to send me a CNC tap kit. So I have one of these uh, metal CNC tap kits. Um, it's not the Chaotic Lab ones. These ones are pretty much like one-to-one -one machine versions of the like plastic design, just optimized for machining. Um, so that's going in here. Now the kit they sent me does include everything you need, um, including the end stop. Um, but if you buy it self source, it doesn't include like the printed parts. You have to do that yourself and whatnot. Um, but they sent me the whole like shebang ready to go. Um, they, I heard they prefer, I've heard good things about this kit. They actually sent me this kit a while ago and I've been meaning to put it in a printer. Um, but the reason it took so long is because I want to do it live because I, if I'm going to spend 20 hours upgrading a printer, I'm doing it over live streams because videos don't make sense. Um, also, I have this, the Chaotic Lab. They sent me this as well a while ago. It's been sitting there for a while. Um, CNC version of an older version of TAP. I, the revisions are mostly for the plastic. Like, I know TAP's been upgraded a bunch, but those revisions are for the plastic version. It, the metal, it could be a couple, it could be an older design, it's metal. Um, people kept printing them shittily and breaking parts. Um, so I have this. Now, if longtime followers of the channel, well, not long time, I did it earlier this year. I have machine carbon fiber parts in uh, one of my V2s. I machined them myself. It was like a little fun project. I made a video on it. And then all of a sudden, Chaotic Lab comes out with carbon fiber gantry parts. So I've got, um, I think the XY gantry, the AB uh, motor mounts, um, that's what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna use these parts. I don't know if I have to print anything with these. I don't think so, because I got all the spacers and everything. So we're gonna use that. Okay. So we're gonna put that in. Um, and then also um, for the front idlers, I am using the Cle front, I oh my, this. AirPod is making like a weird like squeakiness. Um, for the front idlers, I have Klee's like beefy front idlers. Um, so we're gonna use those. And then I also have the beefy Z idlers. Um, now for the tool head, I haven't printed any parts off because I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I have a Rapido in there right now. I might keep the Rapido in there. Um, am I using the Ram? No, I'm using the Klee idlers. Um, I'm using Klee's version of the beefier front idlers and the Z idlers, not the Rama ones. Um, I've been recommended to use the Klee ones. Apparently they're better. Um, I don't have a link for those in the description. I don't think I put one. Um, when it comes to the tool head, I don't know if I'm gonna go with Revo High Flow or keep the Rapido I already have in there. I, I'm trending to keep the Rapido, but I may not. I don't know for sure yet. Um, simple as that. Um, everything below the deck is remaining the same. I'm not fiddling with the Z. Um, the only thing I've done is because I'm switching from blue accent to, to a dark red sparkle accent, I, I printed um, new fan things up front and that's about it. Um, also, uh, we have to do some chopping. So I bought a, uh, I got a Dremel cutoff wheel. We gotta chop this MGN 12 rail down because this machine is an oddball size. So I can't just buy rails. Um, I have to like chop rails down for it. Uh, keep repeating and get a diamond back. I already got a diamond back, um, but I have I think I have a 0.6 CHT in here right now. So first things first, um, we have to, um, we have to strip this because yeah, you can't work on a printer like this. So we got to get to stripping. So let's get started. Take off these panels. Um, now here's the fun thing. This machine, um, was written, this is my oldest Voron, technically. So we're, we're gonna go um, down memory lane. What's on the X-Rail dual MGN9? Yes, dual MGN9s. Um, this is my oldest Voron. This is the frame from V1 serial number 100. Um, when I got into Vorons, at the time I had a Monoprice Select Mini. It was really small. I'm like, I want big printer, big printer betterer. So I went and built a 300 by 300 by 400 uh, Voron V1.5. Don't do that. <laughs> um, 
but I did it anyways. Uh, now, since upgrading it to a V2, it performs much better because um, a V1 at that scale wasn't a great idea. But when I upgraded this, I kind of did it really budget. So you may notice the back rail or the back extrusion is a is like silver because I just took a, a random extrusion. I had to cut it down with a hacksaw. The enclosure, coral plast um, because it was cheap and it was easy to cut on hand. Because again, everything here is oddball size. The only panel that I actually have um, is the front panel and the top panel because it just happens to be stock sizes at Home Depot fit for that. Um, oh, there's a lot of, there's years of buildup in this machine. <laughs> and the Coroplast is all warped too. I gotta, I gotta get more um, clips to hold it in place because it's sinking because Coroplast doesn't take the heat too well. So it's like sinking. <laughs> um, are the Klee front other things than the stock ones? No, they're not the stock ones, they're the Klee ones. If they're the stock ones, I'd say I'd be using the stock ones. I'm using the Klee ones. Okay, so let's, you know what? I'm gonna move some boxes. Here. So this can go in there, this can go in here, and that can go in there. Haha, -ha, I am a genius. Okay. That can go there. There we go. So there we go. It's amazing how much just taking the panels off just opens. It's open. It's an open concept boron now. So yeah. Um, so when it comes to the gantry or for the tool head too, um, I. I think I, right now I have a clockwork. I think it's a clockwork one. Um, yeah, it's a clockwork one because this is running like the first version of tap that still worked with V2.4 release, like not R2, so it, it not the MGN12, so it doesn't have a, a clockwork two. But what I probably will end up doing is putting a, I think I have an LDO orbiter I can, grab off a printer that I'm not using and put that in. Um, I'm tempted to use a um, an orbiter on this instead of like a clockwork or whatever. You saw the giant I got? Maybe, I don't know. Look at this mess. Yeah, this is, this was, you know, you could tell I built this one when I still worked at the shop because I have a bunch of wiring in here. Like the mains wiring is all 16 gauge wire I uh, borrowed from work. And then also one little fun thing. Uh, this, these are fiberglass. The, the little spacers here are fiberglass spacers for the bed um, that I, I basically just went, uh, we have fiberboard, like I used off cuts of fiberboard, which is quarter inch thick, dense fiberboard that we use for like insulating molds from the planums. Um, and I took a hole saw and I drilled little pucks with a hole in it. And I use that as my bed spacers. So yeah, I figure if it'll keep a, uh, an extremely hot injection mold from transferring heat into the planum of a uh, injection mold press, um, it'd be good enough for a bed. Love Revo. I, I might put Revo, I think I have enough components on hand to put a Revo high flow in here. Um, I do have a Revo high temp on the way. Um, E3D is sending me one, uh, but I'm, we're gonna put that in Toasty Boy. So that's gonna go in Toasty Boy when it shows up. I gotta take these handles off. Uh, stubby time. I don't know if that's the right size. Too big. You know what, I, I need to get my, uh, there we go. Size. There we go. Uh, nope, they're the Voron ones. They are a, um, a a mod that the Annex folks took and made their own version of. These were before the Annex ones.
What mods are we doing? So the plan today is more prep work. Um, is basically, we're gonna tear this down, make the plan and start getting things ready. So I've got to cut some, uh, oh shoot, it's inside. I gotta go um, get the thing I got. I gotta get my like cutoff wheel. I gotta make a bunch of pins. I gotta cut down some extru uh, rails. So we, we, we've got some, some prep work to do before we get to actually installing mods, but that's why it's a series. Voila, in printer. I shown the CNC, yep, earlier in the stream. There's a link to it in the video description if you wanna check it out. So again, um, I'm not gonna be redoing the under the hood stuff. So we're gonna use the same electrical. We're gonna use the same, um, same electrical. I, I'm, gonna, I'm not putting, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of, oh, oh no, I don't drop my brand new bits. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go and put, um, what should I call it on it? Um, a CAN bus tool head, but I'm honestly not probably gonna bother because I, I just probably won't bother. Um, I, I'll probably just, you know, leave the existing wiring because it works. That way I don't have to redo the config and I could just literally just reassemble everything, plug it all back together and we're golden. Um, so yeah, that will probably be what we end up doing. Because while, while CAN bus is cool, I already have the wire loom made, run, and installed. Um, these are lineal wires, they're nice wires. Um, everything's already run, everything I know works. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I'd be, I'd be doing more work to switch it to, ta uh, to, to CAN bus. Cleans up the whole wire. But the thing is, the wiring's already done. Like, I, I'm unplugging it, I'm putting it to the side, and then I'm plugging it back together. The config's already, like, it already runs. Well, not right now, we, we've, we've detached the gantry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know what I mean, right? Um, I need a box. There we go, this'll work. I probably should have taken the tool head apart before I took those off. Noctua fans. Well, okay, I'm running Noctua fans, but they are literally just for uh, undercarriage cooling. So they they really could be anything. Uh, GE5C mod, no, I don't bother with that. Not really uh, high on my priority list. I've, I've never had an issue with the existing setup of uh, the current, like, corner thingies so I've, I've never really like i i've done the g5 mod or ge5 mod or whatever it's called on some printers uh, because like i built kits that came with those parts but in terms of like self-sourcing it yeah it's, it's not been an issue uh will bamboo put on their bed i have no idea what bamboo is up to apparently it's a new printer um it's quiet Congratulations, you're, you're doing what Prusa did, you know, what, six, seven years ago when the Mark III came out. Quiet printers are nothing to brag about, especially when you're, you know, you're correcting the issue of your first printer was loud as shit when everyone else has quiet printers. So congratulations, you, you, you're doing the bare minimum. Um, but apparently it's a, I think it's a mixing tool head. I've got a few, I think it's a mixing tool head because from what I'm seeing, it looks like a mixing tool head, which that'll be cool. Um, Every time I've seen a mixing tool head in the past, it's been a royal pain in the ass. Um, from everything I've seen, from every every comment and whatever, mixing tool heads are an absolute nightmare. Um, but if Bamboo figured out a way to make it not BMS, good for them. But 
I hold my uh, critique until I see one in person because let's be honest, folks. I push the button, there you go. You know they ain't sending me one and I'm not going out of my way to buy one, so. Better than Resident on Experimental Z Ball Joint from Whopping Orchard. There you go. Now here's the thing though. Did you happen to change anything else while doing that mod? Like adjust belt tension or like, there's so many variables at play when you do tensioning. It, it's hard to like, for sure, make sure. So I might be able to reuse this one, whole piece here. I don't know. We'll find out if I got to reprint with the, with the CNC tap, which I've already lost. Seriously, here it is. Okay. Um, I don't know if I could just, if this has the same spacing, I might, it might, we'll see. I don't know. I can't remember if these are, these probably are not compatible. I probably got to print a new one of these, but the front plate, I'll just re put the fans in the new one. Look, so this is the old, old color right here and what we're going to. So. I don't think bamboo would make a bed slinger. They, they've, they've sunken too much on their, you know, enclosed printer superiority to switch to a, a bed slinger design at this point, I think. I mean, if they did, they did. I know a few people have them already. Um, again, I, you know they ain't sending me one. I, I, I complain too much about things apparently. Oh well, it is what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. Ooh, when I move this, the light turns on, on the uh, extruder. That's always good to see. You complain too much? Nah, you know, I should have been a good boy. And when, when, the, when my uh, printer decided to start smoking, kept my mouth shut apparently and contacted him privately instead of making a scene. If it's the latest stealth burner, the problem is it's not the latest. It's a stealth burner from just after like stealth burner went public. So. Fire's good, it means it's hot product. <laughs> Are you part of their marketing team? I don't think I'll struggle. Yeah, I, I won't struggle with content without the bam without the bamboo. It's not my audience, really. I I will. I'll be fine. But if you're worried about me, and you want to help support the channel, the content I create, the things I do, consider becoming a member of the channel, a Patreon supporter, or gifting memberships to others. Um, or hey, some of the links in the uh, description, like, you know, Polymaker, because every stream we give away a spool of Polymaker filament, but if you don't want to, you know, enter to win and get a free spool, um, you'd rather spend your money, um, there are affiliate links in the description that don't cost you anything extra and go a long way in supporting the channel. So be sure to check them out. Uh, do you think bamboo printer will run, run away too? I don't know. Hard to say, don't know what the firmware is. There we go. So we got the wire harness out of the way. Gary, gifted a community membership, cheers. Have I fixed Toasty Boy yet? We're still mount. No, Toasty Boy is up and running. Toasty Boy can run. I, I, I did actually, we, we did it on a stream. We fixed it on a live stream. Toasty Boy is fully functional at this point. Um, I just haven't been using it because I haven't been printing some of the high stuff. I might get, you know what? Fata sent me some stuff. I, I think I'm going to try it this week. I may, I may try, uh, cause I, I want to try North print sent me this stuff here, uh, which was the, uh, guy who also 
traded me for the Tico. They got this bed adhesive stuff that works pretty good. So in Toasty, because I was playing around with cart with um, uh, Peak, the bed in there is just pure aluminum. So what I may do, because on Toasty here, I literally just have, it's just straight up spring steel. Straight up spring steel. And we were printing like we had glue on it for the, the Peak stuff. Because the adhesive, like I was running the bed at like 120, right? So what I'm gonna do is put that stuff on and I've got a bunch of the um, Fadis carbon fiber glass filled stuff. Um, I'm gonna run some of that on Toasty this week probably. Play around with that. How big is this? Uh, three, it's, it's tall boy, so it's... Uh, 330 by 330 by 380-ish, depends on what tool head you use and whatnot. It's an oddball size Voron, that's why. This is built using uh, a 300 by 300 by 400 V1 frame. So it's an oddball size at V2 size. Um, I'm realizing I may hopefully have enough belt. I'm hoping I can reuse these belts. Because <laughs> if not, that's gonna suck. But I'm hoping I can reuse these belts. Because they're not that old. It is Saturday night with Nero. And I was at the uh, the local Lickbow today. Because the wifey wanted me to grab some coolers and I picked up some, don't wanna lose these, they're really expensive. What did I pick up? Let me grab it here, I'll show you. We'll, we'll, we'll get into this later, it's a little too early. Aha. But they, they were doing samples of it, so I, I had to get it. Um, Focus, Wolfhead Distillery, which is actually local, it's in Amherstburg. Uh, cinnamon flavored whiskey. in the freezer right now so there you go so we'll, we'll have a we'll have a little drinky drink of that later the best way I could describe it because they, they were giving out some samples of it in the the LCBO um, fireball that doesn't suck <laughs> it's actually really tasty um, so yeah Okay, I might not have enough in here. Can you make a pool to win one of those? Like the alcohol? Uh, I don't think so by law. Me giving away spools of filament on a live stream is a little bit different than alcoholic beverages internationally. Um, yeah. So. Wolfenstein, no. Had their coffee look here. Um, I have, I guess you could say, a family member who's kind of involved with them. So I've tried a bunch of it over the, uh, the years and they, they make good stuff. They are somewhat local, but I've never actually visited them yet. Like Hiram Walkers, for those that know, Hiram Walkers is in town, like where I live. Um, I can go like to the, where they make a bunch of their stuff. They actually have where they age everything, where Hiram Walkers ages everything, is literally just like 10 minutes from my house. Um, can't really get on the property, but it's there. Any tips on tuning an Urkfa? Um, join the Voron Discord and check out the Urkfa channels and see what pin guides they have in there because I'll be honest, I haven't used an Urkfa in quite a while. Coffee liqueur plus chocolate milk. Well, yeah, like Bailey's and, and milk is, or Bailey's and coffee is a pretty common drink. So I'm taking all the screws out and I'm saving them, obviously, because, um, you know.
I've done distillery tour. I've done a, a tour of uh, a distillery. Um, not a dist. Well, I guess you can see They make. Uh, they, they can't call it whiskey because you can only call it whiskey if it's made in you know certain it's it's like champagne right it's got to be made in a certain place to be called certain things but um or, or uh, scotch you, it, they make scotch but they can't call it scotch because they're not in scotland um so they call it canadian whiskey um but that was in nova scotia uh glenova i think it was called and then i've been to the alexander keese brewery in halifax or the not the brewery but like the where they have it in in halifax there I've done tours of that place too, which was really cool. What's holding this together still? Oh, there's. No, there are no screws. What? What is hold? Oh. Oh, the heat set's pulled through. Okay. Well, I guess that kind of holds it together. Okay. So we got that. Um, I will take the rails off once I get this gantry off. So let's bring you over here. Whoa. Don't want to drop this. That would be bad. What do I have in here holding you down? I'm probably gonna need a smaller one here. Actually, it's almost cool enough to wear the apron in here. It's it's like 25. I was almost, I was gonna wear the apron and then I'm like, eh, it's a little warm. But this plank is cutting into my shirt, which is the reason I started wearing the apron in the first place back when I was in the basement. All my, all my beautiful wiring undone. Okay, pins up. Remind me, pins up. Okay, I'm telling you now because I'm gonna ask you in a couple weeks when we put this back together, I'm gonna be like, which way do the pins go? And you're gonna tell me, what are you gonna say? Repeat after me, everyone in chat, pins up. Because I got the four pins here for the Hall Effect end stop on this. And pins up. If you say pins down, I'm gonna ban you. Simple as that. I'm an equal opportunity banner. Laces out. I was waiting for somebody to do laces out. Ah. There we go. Does the hall of does anyone use the hall effects? Any well, I guess nobody uses these anymore. I don't even need these anymore because I'm just gonna go uh, centralist. I don't even need the hall effects anymore, so I'm not even gonna bother with these. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother putting this back in because I'm just gonna go centralist. Since because okay, for centralist homing is pretty common now um, on Vorons and, and most printers. For the longest time, sensorless on Clipper was not the greatest, especially Core X. Well, Core XY sensorless on Clipper was kind of weird for a while. So nobody ran sensorless on Vorons up until like a little over a year ago. Um, so the, if for those that are Gucci, you know, for us that had like Gucci, you know, ball and setups, we ran these, which was um, the Hall Effect sensor, which is totally not in focus that you could, you know, if you if you were around at the time, somebody on the Voron Discord or Slack would sell them. And the fun thing is, I don't know if this one has it, if this is an old enough revision of it. One second here. It is the slower homing. Like, here's the thing when people, like, this is why I don't care about speeds of like probing and whatnot. If I'm printing something for 12 hours, do I care about 10 seconds extra during setup? Nah. Like, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll complain when it gets excessively long. Looking at you, Bamboo. Um, but like an extra 10 seconds during setup isn't really gonna break the bank. Okay, so we're gonna do some history here. Let, let's let's do some history, okay? I'm gonna come around the camera here. 
Hi. Okay. So to give you an idea how old this is, these are the Hall Effect end stops. Okay. See if it shows there. See the VZBot logo? Okay. That's not a VZBot. That's an, or sorry, VZBot. See the Voron logo? See how it says MZBot? Okay. What is that serial number? Right there. V24PCB, Rev B. Okay. Now, oh, it, it, well, this is a 2.4. I have this on my V2, like 2.0. Um, this was designed for the V24. So technically, this is a V24 component. <laughs> um, that's how old this is. This was the end stop on the Voron 24. Um, so, you know, because you can, you can adjust them. That's the advantage of the Hall effect. You have a little dial there. You can actually easily adjust your, your sensor, your end stop distance and it sensor it. Like it's, it's Hall effect. So you don't have to worry about a sensor, uh, 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 a limit switch wearing out or anything because it's Hall effect. It's contactless, right? Even like clicky end stops, right? You know, they'll, they'll eventually wear out after a while, especially in a heated environment or if you hit them hard, right? Hall effect, it's instant, it's magnetic field, right? It, it doesn't touch anything. So they technically last, you know, theoretically until like the PCB degrades, which takes a while. Um, and you can adjust the, the contact distance, right? So yeah, that's a, that's a V24 component. So a little bit of history for you. So I think a few vendors ended up selling them, but for the, for, the longest time, if you wanted one of those, um, somebody would have to make you one. I think I got those from Andre. I think Andre was making them. So you you would get the PCBs and they would and they would solder them up themselves. But I'm probably just going to end up going with sensorless with this mod. Save say cut down on some of the wires, clean it up a little bit. Because two things, one, as, as, as cool as CAN bus would be, um, I don't have a spare CAN bus board on hand. So unless, you know, if you own a company that sells CAN bus boards and you want to promote it and then you can get it to me in the next, you know, week and a half. Well, actually you got two weeks. If you can get me a CAN bus board in two weeks and you want me to shill your product and you sell CAN bus boards, hey, hey, I'm your man. Hit me up, DMs are open. Otherwise I'm just gonna reuse what I already have because it already works. <laughs> Because this is a uh, linear wiring harness, which is actually kind of nice. I like it. Go. I probably should honestly talk to Luke at Big True Tech. Eh, I probably should. Uh, they have some new. Because here's the thing: I haven't played with Canbus in a while, and apparently it's gotten a lot better. So I probably should put Canbus in here, um, because also this kit here um, from Chaotic Lab has the umbilical part. Um, the problem is actually, I think I wouldn't get as much room. I don't know, because you have an umbilical up top. Maybe it wouldn't be as tight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. So I don't need this either. I can get rid of that end stop. Get these wires out of here. What's the garage temp at? Uh, 20, actually right, it's just under, it's actually going down slightly. It's it's 24 in here right now. Thomas White's install guy. Well, I, mean, I need a CAN bus board and I need a CAN bus board that's compatible with that guy. Cause the problem is a lot of the CAN bus stuff is like, well, it depends on which version you got type thing. Does stan can stand for Canada in some situations, but in what does can stand for in can bus? What does can, uh, can bus stand for? Who, who will educate me? The poor unknowing fool that I am. Who, who can educate me as to what can bus? I'm gonna have to reprint these clips. I was fancy um, and I, I actually printed uh, accent um, and stops for the drag chains on this. Um, one, because, you know, there's not, 
there, there isn't as many accent parts on current Vorans than there used to be. And two, um, I didn't have end stops because I just had a bunch of extra snap chain that I used for this. And now I need a little snippy thing here. Ba -ba -ba -da. Controller area network, there you go. It, it Big in automotive. CAN bus kind of is like at home in automotive if I remember correctly. Like it, it's like the, the most cars use CAN bus for communication if I remember correctly. Canadian area network and no. So I take all this off. Break all these. Am I going the right way? Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way. No, I don't want to break it. There. Oh, okay, well, I, I broke that one. Oops. Okay, now I gotta go CAN bus. I broke one clip on my drag chains. Now I gotta, I, I can't use drag chains anymore. Speaking of cars, you can have some dinner. I had a small bowl of pasta with homemade uh, meat sauce because I am on a diet. And all I've had today to eat is a single chicken sandwich and a small bowl of pasta. I, I seen, so I, I watched, you know what it was? I'll, I'll be honest, the, the live stream with the, um, I can't remember what it was. One of the recent live streams in the basement, whatever I did last week, I think it was the, the KLP one one. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I need to revisit the diet. <laughs> I don't, I'm not wearing the apron to hide my shame anymore on camera. Is alcohol, um, as long as it's clean, I, 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 I you know, a little bit of whiskey and water, you're good to go. Right? It's clean, it's clean. No sugar in it. Oh, lost another one. Oh, I found that one though. No, don't do YouTube mirrors are bad enough. <laughs> there we go. Going running. Um, you lose weight in the kitchen. You don't lose weight running. It takes a heck of a lot more work to lose a pound um, running like burning the calories versus just not consuming the calories to begin with. Um, I walk a lot, not right now, but like when the little guy's in school, I, I you know, me and the wifey will we'll walk him to school and then we'll go for a little walk in the morning or whatever. So I, I, I get my steps in. Um, we like to, I, I like wandering. When I go places, I like to wander. Like I've got, I can walk all day. I can run all, like I don't run. I, I hate working out. Spend, spend time in the army, you'll hate working out. Because <laughs> the army makes it suck. So now I've got like a, a predisposition to hating working out. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you lose weight in the kitchen. You gain muscle in the gym, you lose weight in the kitchen. I don't need to gain muscle. I, I can, you know, as long, I can pick my kid up. I can do the stuff I need to do. So I'm not worried about building muscle. I'm, I'm worried about, you know, losing a belly and you, you lose it by just eating better. I've done it before. I just fell off the, the wagon and I need to get back on the wagon. Okay, there's that one. Are you undone? Where are you caught on? There we go. That part's gone. 
Ah, found it. Okay, oh yeah, this was before we had heat set ones. I gotta reprint that. A damn cat weighs as much as a toddler. That's a big cat. That's a big kitty. No kitty, my pot pie. I love how everything is nicely labeled on this. So this is BM. That's why I really like this Lineo kit. Everything is nicely labeled. Brain does help with motivation. Here's the thing though. I I'm gonna sit on my butt and play Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I, I cut the grass. I do stuff around the house. That's a, that's enough. That's enough physical stuff. I've got a I've got a five year old who likes being picked up all the time. I do enough around the house to 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 count as physical activity. Quick rundown. Um, if you watch at the beginning of the stream, I went over everything. Why weren't you here at the beginning of the stream? Come on, I, I explained it all at the beginning of the stream. Why weren't you here? Where were you? Where were you? I, I, I laid it all out. Why, why weren't you there? Dang it, I'm missing an Allen key. Is this the Allen key? No, I'm missing the size between that and that. Are you the Allen key? No, you're not the Allen key. Uh-oh. I'm missing that random, oh. Hmm. That ain't not good. that don't fit. How am I missing that that size Allen key? That ain't it. That's too big. There we go. That was the right one. It just didn't go in the hole the right way. There we go. Cool. I was star fielding. Uh, TLDR, CNC tap, uh, carbon fiber, AB motor mounts, and XY joints. Uh, we are putting the Klee front idler, beefy front idlers in. Uh, for the front idlers and the Z. And then for the tool head, I'm probably gonna put a either an orbiter or a, um, yeah, I think I'm putting an orbiter. I know, I'm gonna pull one of the small extruders off like probably the V Minion or a printer I'm not using much right now um, and put that in here. Uh, we're probably keeping the Rapido. Um, as of right now, wiring is remaining with the wiring loom that I already have that's already existing because it already exists and it's already made and I don't need to redo it. Um, but we may go to CNC if I, or correction, uh, CAN bus if I get a kit in the next two weeks. If not, well, then we're not. Simple as that. Um, and then also, um, XYN stop delete and uh, ZN stop delete because we're going sensorless and we're going with uh, tap. So, yep. So now I gotta figure out how to open these up. This is not a standard drag chain. How different are the ones? Well, these ones are, are, are um, cus or not custom. These ones are like, how does these open? Oh, that's annoying. That is annoying. Um, oh man, oh yeah, these are annoying. These just come off. Um, they're the Chaotic Lab ones. So I haven't looked at them like completely, but they're the Chaotic Lab ones. How do these supposed to These just snap off. That is super annoying. So I can't lose these. Great. I'm gonna lose these. Great. I've already lost one. Nope, oh, there it is. Yeah, the links are in the description. Does nobody check video description links? Also, enter for your chance to win Polymaker Filament. Link in the description. Also, while you're down there, check out the other affiliate links. Also, while you're down there, consider becoming a channel member or a Patreon supporter. Also, while you're down there, uh, just put your credit card information in those numbers on the back, the funny ones. Go, uh, go get them in your mom's uh, purse. She doesn't need them.
I really don't like these drag chains. These are like random Amazon drag chains that I bought. Everything on this printer is not from a kit, except for the, the wiring harness is pre-made um, and the, uh, the stuff we're gonna be putting in it now. But otherwise, everything on this machine is self-sourced. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Like this machine was made before kits were a thing. Austin, $10, cheers. Hey, Nero, I'm thinking of a lightweight X-beam for higher Y-axis cells for input shaver. 5K right now. That You should be getting way more than 5K even with a stock setup. Um, Simon Vez, uh, go check out his YouTube channel. I just did a video comparing uh, carbon fiber and lightweight aluminum gantries. Um, so go, go check those out. Go check that video out. I can't TLDR for it because I can't remember how it ended. <laughs> but go watch the his video because yeah go go give he did the work go watch him oh i don't like these drag chains i don't like these drag chains yeah Oh, these do snap open. Oh, well, they just, they snap open. They just happen to break off really easily. Get new drag chains. Nah, they work. I mean, the, the, the most annoying part is putting them on and taking them off. Once it's on or off, it's, it's, they work fine. Not gonna spend $30 on something I'm gonna do one more time. But they are beefy, they are pretty beefy. Remember, I live in Canada, so it's not, you know, our, our Amazon is usually not as um, well stocked and, and usually overpriced. At least they're not duct tape. That's eh, true. And. Yep. Or cat food from Amazon this morning. I had by one. Our delivery time isn't too bad if you live in a big city. Like most stuff, I'll get next day to. It's usually two to three days though lately. Very rarely do we get stuff next day anymore. Okay, so that is that. So now I need to get this gantry out. Um, so what is the easiest way to do that? What is the easiest way to get? Well, obviously take the belts off. Probably shouldn't have all these plastic parts on the workbench here, but I do. How's that? I should I should have I should try I I should have undid these and tried to run input shaper. Okay. Nope. I'm gonna need a ball. For this. So these belts I should be able to reuse, no problem. They're nine mil belts. Use some spools to hold up the gantry. Nah. That, nah, nah, why, where's the fun in that? And let it come tumbling down, tumbling down, tumbling down. It's 
it's all coming apart anyways. Got 144 people. We got one. Like the smash button. If you've entered to win some Polymaker filament and you haven't liked the smash button, I'm not gonna say it's not gonna hurt your odds, but it may help your odds, but it may hurt your odds. But now that that's in your head, okay, are you really not gonna like the smash button now? Because now, you know, it, it, it improves your odds, maybe, potentially, who knows? But you won't know until you like it. Do it. Do it now. Remember how they tell you not to move motors when it's plugged in? It's not a proper near earth stream until a spool of filament's used for something. Here's the funny thing, I'm standing on filament right now. I'm actually like three feet tall. I'm just standing on filament the whole time. Why do you think you never see my legs? It's an optical illusion. Don't lick the smash button. <laughs> so I was playing Baldur's Gate and uh, like I have been a lot over the past month. Um, and I came across like, I, I don't want to like plot spoil anything, but you come across like a dead spider in one area and I'm playing a dark urge character. So he's got like a, a, a pretty bad background and you have the option to lick the spider, the dead spider, and it's a giant dead spider, like it's big. And you do, and your character gets all gross out, and your party's like, why would you do that? Like, why? Why would you lick the spider? So you, you're like, you know, you figure out, oh, it's poisoned or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But then afterwards, like, you, you finish the scene, you, you, you go back, you, can, you know, back to, like, out of conversation. You can re-interact with the spider and lick it again. And one of your party members is like, don't, don't, don't lick the spider. What are you doing? Are you insane? <laughs> Quit licking the spider. Your character's like, mm, spider. Yeah, I I wanted to get Starfield. I, I can't, I can't. I, until I'm completely like burned out of, of Baldur's Gate and Starfield goes on sale, I just can't justify it. I I, I, I played my Armored Core, I got, I got my other game fixed with Armored Core. Starfield just looks so bloody boring. I'm, I'm sorry, get Game Pass? I could, I play on PC, I don't have a console, so I could. But until, like, I've got a NVIDIA card, the fact that I can't even get 60 FPS on that game on 1080p with, like, max settings with a 3080 is kind of a joke, how unoptimized that game is. But, hey, it's Bethesda. What do you expect? You lie, Todd. Uh, I made friends with the two spiders in the goblin camp. They made that battle so much easier. I've never done that. You can, in, I, I've never, actually, I've never interacted with the spiders in the goblin camp. I've never gone down there to, to interact with them. That's something I haven't done on my characters or any of my playthroughs. Oh, I gotta take those out. Okay, I gotta. It's far from boring. It's got a pretty good story and a lot of content. The thing is, the content is generic Bethesda content. It's go from A to B kill xyz or do a persuasion check so you don't have to kill xyz repeat or it's a collectathon it's 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 literally like i watched I've, I've watched gameplay videos of it and like other people play it and it honestly just looks like every uh, it's the same formula as every other bethesda game and then it does the no man's sky ending where it's like hmm. but it's in space this time yeah I, I'm sorry, if I'm going to play a game in space, I'm going to play the game with my 60-foot giant robot with dual shotguns that flies around at 400 kilometers an hour. <laughs> you get 70. Uh, what settings are you running up below? Because that's pretty good. Most people are... Are you running DLSS too? I, I hate DLSS. I hate how that's a thing now. Oh, the game actually runs like shit, but you can use AI to make it look kind of better, but you have a bunch of artifacts. I'm like, no, no, go away, go away.
rather have fantastic gameplay. But here's the thing, like the game doesn't even look that good. It's got really good texture resolution, but like the character animations are garbage. They're all procedural. Um, and the game just looks like flat. Like it looks like, you know how when you look at a picture of like an HDR image that's not HDR and it looks kind of like grayed? Like that's what the game looks like for me. Don't want to optimize. Of course I don't want to optimize. They're so using the same. <sighs> the same console command that you could do in Oblivion to add credits to your character is the same console command in Starfield. You can go to where NPCs are vendors. If you can get under the ground where the NPCs are, you can find the chest with all their shit. It's the same game engine. It's a newer version of the engine, but it's the same engine. <laughs> the game is exactly like every other Bethesda game. The way it's built is exactly like every other Bethesda game. It's like it, people should have realized this in Fallout 76 where like the, the big bats at the very end use the exact same animations as the dragons from Skyrim. <laughs> it's Bethesda. Damn you, Todd Howard. And don't get me wrong, the game, I'm not saying the game's bad. I'm not saying the game's bad, okay? I probably will end up getting it when it goes on sale at some point. But it's it's a 2015 game. Like the, the mechanics and the way the game looks or feels and operates and the, the way it, the, the gameplay loop is outdated in my opinion. It's very outdated. It's like every other Bethesda game. Runs great. What are you talking about, Aaron? Go watch like uh, the Digital Foundry breakdown of it, where like a, a 2070, which is a, or tw was it a 2080 or 2070, which is an empirically either exactly on par or better card than a 5700 XT gets 20 less FPS than a thing. They, they, they completely butchered um, NVIDIA graphics card implementation in it, or they didn't like spit let them, the drivers are horrible or whatever, because they didn't get time to properly like hash them out and the game runs like compared to games that look either the same or better it runs well below those games in terms of frame rate and again the animations are garbage the animations are absolutely garbage character interaction is boring if i'm playing a role-playing game i want to get invested in the characters like the good voice acting the voice acting is good but imagine if I just did the whole stream like this, like dead eye staring. To, every character that walks by your character is dead eyed into your face the entire time. It's super weird. It's creepy. And they all just kind of like, hi, how are you doing? Oh, come to the, the, the cloud planet often. Oh, cool. I used to be a spacer adventurer like you until I took a rocket to the knee. Like it, it's, it's bleh. If you're gonna play Starfield, do not play Baldur's Gate first. <laughs> do not play Baldur's Gate first if you're gonna play Starfield. Simple as that. <laughs> gang gang. That trend died quick, eh? Everyone on social media, well, the social, I don't like follow, I don't have TikTok or short, I don't watch shorts or any of that. But that died off really quick. There was a ton of stuff about the NPC chick and gang gang and all that, and then it just stopped. It just stopped. Everyone's like, okay, we're on to the next thing. It's a completely different game though. But it's still a game where you interact with characters. Just because the, the game itself is it, it's a CRPG versus an, a first person shooter RPG. But they still have, you know, you talk to a character and you can, you can pick choices, right? Like when you, when you talk to multiple NPCs at once in Starfield, it literally, each NPC is staring you dead eyed in the face. And it's not a, it's not a group setting. When you talk to one character, you're like this. And then when the other character talks, crash cut to the other character just like just a crash cut not like the camera pans over to the other character or they're both on screen at once it's just they each have their own it's like watching it's like it's literally like watching um 
uh, you're on voice chat, you're, you're, you're on Zoom, and every time somebody chats, their screen comes on front. That's all it is. Like there's no, like the character interactions are dead. It's like you're talking to a bunch of flat zombies. It's, it's the Facial animations in Baldur's Gate are insane. What they actually did was when they recorded all the voice lines in Baldur's Gate 3, um, they actually mo-capped the characters too. So when you went in to record your voice lines, they actually mo-capped you. So when the character was recording, they're like, you know, they, they so that's why certain characters have certain like mannerisms and tics and whatnot, like behaviors, like they always kind of do like the same thing. It's because that's what the, the, the person doing the voices did um, when doing the, uh, that. So it's kind of like, oh, cool. That makes sense. And before it's like, well, you know, it's a, it's a smaller game. Um, the script for Baldur's Gate 3 is like 3 million pages and they had 248 voice actors. And there is 178 hours of cutscenes in that game. So if they could do it, a much smaller studio on a shorter time frame with a smaller budget, Bethesda could do it too. Because remember, because remember, Bethesda is part of Microsoft. Microsoft is a $3 trillion company. They could do it. They just did it. And in case you're new to the channel, one of my peeves is companies is when a company could do something and doesn't. Why is your stream deck so late? I don't know. I, I got to figure it out because I, I've done software updates. It's, it's everything's up to date. It, it's the only thing. I, oh, you know what? You know what it might be? Let me let me try something here. Let me let me try something. I think I might know what it might be. Um, if it's this, I'm going to be annoyed because it makes cable management more annoying. Did I unplug the right thing? I did. Okay, let's let's try this. Punch in. Main camera. Punch in. Main camera. That camera. Desktop. Punch in. Punch in. Okay, that's it. Figured it out. That's annoying. It's I had it plugged into a USB hub. It was a USB hub. So I, I plugged it directly into the computer. It doesn't do it anymore. Now, now it's it's it. So it was the USB hub that was doing it. That's kind of annoying because now I got the the cable management isn't as clean. It's weird because it doesn't do it with a keyboard or anything or a mouse. The reaction time's the same on a keyboard and mouse. Get a longer USB cable. I have like USB to USB cables. So I just gotta find them. Okay, so now let's take this front, uh, this front either off. I'm just gonna put you in there. Zip tie this up so I don't lose these. Multi cameras over one hub. Um, you can. Um, so time traveler DMC. The issue is on Windows, and I believe it's the same on pretty much everything. Um, you can only have two cameras per USB controller. Um, it's just the way Windows works. Um, and I believe most operating systems are like that. So you can only have two USB cameras per controller at a time. So that's an issue I have out here because this computer only has like two USB controllers in it, I think, um, for the front and the back. So technically I can only do four cameras via USB, which I'm, I only got two right now. But once I add an overhead camera and a mobile camera, I'm at three. Um, and then if I wanted a punching cam or something else, I'm at my limit. That's why I like uh, the up or the the HMI inputs versus cam links. I did have five cameras on the computer downstairs at one point, just testing. USB card is pretty cheap though. It is if you have enough room in your computer. My, these computers that I most computers that I build um, are MATX. So the thing is though. Um, a lot of computers, if the way the slot layouts are, you might not be able to plug in a full, or it, well, USB controllers are usually like what? 1X or 2X? Or it's what? 1, 4, 8. Um, 
or what is it? One, four, eight, 16. I can't remember. Either way, you might not have enough room if you got a video card in because of how big modern video cards are too. Um, this computer has a 1070 in it. I think I could put a U yeah, I still have room to put a USB card in here. Um, cause I bought the motherboard specifically to make sure I could do that. Um, but if I'm putting another USB card in there, I'm putting an HDMI capture card in there. Cause that gives you better quality than the cam links. Okay, so I gotta take this back one apart now. Where's me stubby? Oh, I gotta be careful here. I'm changing, I'm swapping bits between the two screwdrivers and that's gonna get a messy quick. Cam Link Pro with four, that's what I run downstairs. The computer downstairs has um, a Cam Link Pro with four HDMI ins. That's the uh, setup downstairs that I use. The thing is that the, the cost of the motherboard usually depends. It depends on your USB. A lot of time you might only have like one USB controller for the back and then anything you plug into the, the motherboard might have its own H controller. So you probably, you might only have two USB controllers, one for the rear and then one for the uh, the front IO. And you might have two for the rear, you might have one for like the USB two ports and then one for like the USB three ports. It, it depends on the setup. PS slot with four lights. Yeah, I have mine, the computer downstairs actually has two 16 slot um, um, PCI connectors on the motherboard. It's an MATX. It's actually, it's got two and then it's got a one X one too. Um, but the, with the, it, with the full size slots, you could put shorter cards in them. So that's what I've got down there. So I've got the video card in one and then I've got the uh, thing in the other, which I don't know. Has anyone noticed if the streams look ever so slightly better the past couple days? Cause the newest OBS update allows you to, uh, Pull it up here, video, output, yeah. Um, I can't run AV1, unfortunately. Um, oh, no. The the newest, I can do uh, NVIDIA HEVC now. Um, before I did uh, NVIDIA NVENC H264, but now I can do HEVC. Um, so it's a slightly higher quality, apparently. Um, it's kind of hard to say. I wish I could do AV1. Um, part of me wants to get their hands on a, uh, like a, like not even a 770, like, like just a 380 just for AV1 encoding. Cause I don't like, yeah, I've got a 1070 out here, but I don't game out here and yeah, you can play games on a 1070 still, but I don't play games out here. I don't play games in the basement. The, the biggest rendering anything has to do out here is the live stream, which is all handled by the video card. Like right now I'm putting 1% load on the CPU. Um, I'm gonna leave these together. I'm leaving all this stuff together so that way I don't have to uh, find the screws later. Get an Intel card. Arc has AV1. Oh, I know. The thing is also with Arc that requires me buying the card. And here's the thing the streams look fine as is. So I can't really justify dropping a couple hundred bucks on a video card for encoding when the current encoding looks just fine. Um, if I was doing high speed gaming, like if I, if I was uh, a Fortnite streamer or a Counter-Strike streamer, um, having a separate 380, which you can get pretty cheap, like just for encoding AV1, hey, that would make sense because it's a fast paced thing. I'm, I'm streaming computer or 3D printer builds. Um, NVENC is good enough. <laughs> Time to make a review channel Nero Tech Tips. No, I don't like making YouTube videos. <laughs> you guys know this. Uh, bought Baldur's Gate for PS5, loving it. Yeah, it apparently runs pretty good on PS5. It runs graphically the equivalent of Ultra. Um, I recommend running it in performance mode though, just because I like smoother frame rates, that's me. Um, once you get to Act 3 though, it's gonna slog. Act 3 is... I lost me balls. Well. 
Those ones are gone. Yeah, yeah, I ain't finding those. Those those balls are gone. Oh, I found one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Spider webs. Wait, wait. Aha! 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 Linus, you genius! Linus, you genius! I found me balls! I found my balls! Found four balls. Okay, now I don't have tweezers out here, I don't think. Yeah, I don't have tweezers out here. Okay, so I gotta reinsert my balls back in here with my fat fingers. And I gotta put it back on its, its guide. Here we go, okay. Any more balls? I don't see any balls down here. Yeah, no more balls. Okay, so now I gotta slide it back on. Hi from New Zealand, you joined at a great time. You joined this stream at the best time. <laughs> Good old LTT. Okay. Put magnets on my pro. <laughs> okay, so, oh shoot, that's what I gotta do. Ah, uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. That's, I forgot to print something. I forgot to print something. Hey, GitHub. No, that's not what I wanted. Hey, GitHub. Uh, Voron 2, STLs, Tools, MGN 12 Rail Guide, Download, uh, the Bamboo, screw it. Park the Slicer. Pro I don't have all the printers out here, that's the problem. I don't have the eyepiece for half the printers out here yet. Cancel it. Yeah, it's an old version, whatever, shut up. Pair. 12, cool, I need two of them. Uh, what is it, how do, I, how do you double it? Whatever, control, clone, one, cool. That, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Back to that plate, arrange, arrange. Uh, cool, generic ASA, slice plate, cool. It's not the high temp plate, it's the textured plate. Slice plate, cool, print plate, cool, 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 send. Okay, let that do that. How many balls am I missing? Quite a few, but we're not reusing these rails. These rails, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I'll figure out something to do with them. Um, but, we'll figure out something. The stubby is not good at this. This is not a stubby thing. Is that a stubby bit? That is a stubby bit. I knew this was gonna happen. I'm getting mi bits mixed up between the two. Ender three upgrade. That would require me wanting to do work on an Ender. I've got an Ender. Te technically, I have an Ender 3. It's been in parts in a bin for the past year plus. I like the LTT screw. No, I, I absolutely hate these. That's why I bought two of them. No, they're nice. I like them. 
In terms of like the kind of screwdriver that I would use in this kind of use case, I like it. I honestly wish they sold this one with this shaft because I like the shaft long enough to be able to actually like do this with it because you can't really do that with the stubby. Um, I just wish this was shorter. So I, I wish they made this where they basically have this shaft on this. So it would be short enough that you can get into more spaces, but still long enough you can, you know, or even shorten this a little bit. So it's just, you know, the, the bit is like here. So make like a mid mid-sized one, basically. Have I used Rapido? I have, I've got, um, this has a normal, this had a normal Rapido in it. Um, and I've got the ultra high flow on the, uh, the rat rig over there. And I've done a few prints on it. Can you make it yourself? Make what myself? Oh, and I, I, no, because it's all pressed together. I don't think you can take apart an LTT screwdriver without breaking anything, because a bunch of it's press fit together and it's not designed to come apart. If you try to take it apart, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, don't freak out on me, Bamboo, do your job. Yeah, zip ties on. Yeah, because these are going to go in storage, so I don't know how long. Long shaft doesn't fit the stubby. Yeah, I guess it makes sense because this goes further into there. I'm sure they could figure it out. Sounded desperate. Oh, I wouldn't say desperate. Uh, more like that thing fails to start about half the time when I tell it to start because they used, um, they, their bed probe is shit. I personally think it was a horrible idea to use the bed probing system they use. They use, um, uh, what is it? Resist, force resistors, force sense resistors. I don't know, whatever the, the, in the bed, strain gauge. They basically use strain gauges in the bed. The problem is they're extremely finicky, okay? Um, as the bed moves up and down, the wires also move up and down and that kind of, you know, adjusts like how it, uh, you know, how the connector to the board also kind of moves a little bit. And the problem happens is any change of resistance on the wire affects the reading. So if the wire is moving while you're doing your, it affects your reading and you get bad junk data, which causes these effects. That's why, that's how, like, I have to fix it. I have to take the back off and put tape on because the tape probably came off. You literally fix it by taping a wire in place. So if, if your bed probing method is that sensitive to failure where literally taking a wire and going with a piece of tape to keep it from moving fixes it, it's not a good system to use to begin with or at least implement it better, so. those i'm actually i'm gonna need one of these okay so we can slide so that is the front this is the bottom so slide these off i'm gonna leave these in because i'm gonna have to put those there okay so here comes the fun part class i've got a brand new rail look at this rail it's brand new it is an ldo rail i bought this um I probably could have reached out to Jason and he probably would have sent me one, but I bought this from a vendor in Canada um, because support your local 3D printing company. Um, so this one is from Sparta. I believe it was Sparta 3D I bought it from. Um, so yeah, support your local manufacturers, support your local vendors. So the problem is this is a rail for a 350 Voron. Tallboy is a 330 Voron. So, 
that means I have to chop off approximately um, that much. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave this on most of it so I don't get um, gunk all on it. I'm going to clean off the oil with some alcohol here. We'll have to keep that in mind. If the bed doesn't move, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. But for perspective, we played along with force resistors for quite a while with Voron in the bed, um, trying to use them as uh, basically the same thing bamboo does, where the nozzle hitting the bed is what triggers your thing. And we did not find it sufficiently, consistently accurate enough to our liking and we abandoned it, okay? So that was something we played with years ago. Now, this is with off the shelf sensors, um, and like various DIY setups. So, you know, probably not the same, you know, QC availability that, you know, an actual company has. But we played with it a while ago and we found it lacking. But again, Voron's not a company, right? So we don't have the, the resources to figure that stuff out. So, okay, I need to get a marker. Do I have a marker? I should have a marker or I had a bunch of markers and then I didn't. Uh, here's a marker. Paint marker, perfect, okay. I'm just gonna scrape it, there we go. We go so now i need to cut that much off that is gonna suck so that's how much i gotta chop off so let me go get my grinder because <laughs> i forgot it inside i bought i bought um it's funny, I have a Dremel, but I don't have a Dremel, like it didn't come with anything. So I had to go buy stuff. Uh, where is it? Aha, found it. What time are we at anyways? 9.30. So it was funny. I was at I was at Rona today, buying this kit of 160 random Dremel tools, cost me ten dollars less than it would cost just to buy cutoff wheels for the Dremel. Not 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 the cutoff wheels and the the holder for the cutoff wheels. Just the cutoff wheels. So it was either buy five cutoff wheels for a Dremel, or for ten dollars more, you get three cutoff wheels. But you also get the holder for the cutoff wheels, and you also get all these other tools for the Dremel. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? How's my battery on this? I got two. Good enough. So I was like, what the heck? <laughs> okay, so now, open that up. So I need to undo this with this guy. Problem is these holders suck. Grab that, get that. Your phone's off. Yeah, put your noise canceling and kid on, kitties. Take that out. Because I'm doing metal work here. Stripping and grinding. Oh, just wait. I've got to do a bunch of uh, pins too at some point. Yeah, it's, it's got the quick detach. Okay, so I've got it. I've got easy lock cutting this side up, this side up. I don't know what the difference is between all these cutoff wheels. I've got three cutoff wheels. I got metal, plastic, and metal. So obviously I'm going to use the metal one. 
because um, we are working with ACDC here, so this is heavy metal. Ooh, fancy. Cool. Okay. So. This is gonna send it flying. So I want it to shoot down. So let's move the printer with the electronics over here. Um, I wanna be safe. Not gonna wear gloves. Not gonna bother with gloves. I'm gonna bother with gloves. If I got... Yeah, so I got gloves. Don't know where. My shield is. Where is my shield? So, these are glasses. Ah, these work. I'm wearing glasses right now, as you can see. However, these are not safety glasses. Anytime you are working with metal or anything where something can go flying, I've had metal in my eye. It sucks. I've had metal in my eye that when I went to get it taken out, uh, they forgot a piece and it rusted So I, then I had to go back in to get rust taken out of my eye, okay You only got two eyes, okay Wear eye pro and especially a cutoff wheel especially a cutoff wheel, okay? I Can live if I take a cutoff wheel to the cheek and then I get a cool scar that I could say I got you know Saving kitties from a burning house or something right But if you lose an eye you lose an eye and you only got two of them so, where are my Oakleys? That's right, I do wear my sunglasses at night. And you know what? Make Mr. DFH happy, I'm wearing the apron too. There we go. And so I don't get it all over my clothes when I go inside the house. There we go. I wish I knew where my non, these are actually my shooting glasses. Um, they're my Oakley shooting glasses. You could take, take the frame, the lenses out. Um, I wish I knew where the rest of my lenses were. I gotta find them. So the plan is cut with the wheel facing down. I'm gonna need something to hold this. Um, oh, hey, a vice. That'll do. Okay, so we got the bubble pop there. I want to hold it, but I don't want to damage it, which that should be fine. This is going to get hot. Um, down there anyways nothing okay good probably shouldn't be just pouring water on the ground like why I'm, I'm just pouring like I know I'm in a garage but I'm like why well, should probably shouldn't be pouring water on the ground <gasps>
try not to cook it. We got coolant provided by this LTT store water bottle. You gotta be careful of kickback. Try to keep stuff from flying into the printer's electronics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it now. I don't want to be cutting like these cutoff wheels are pretty weak and I don't want to be like that deep of a cut into the cutoff wheel because the last thing I want to do is it for the bite and kick back and break and bad things happen. We don't want that. Also, it doesn't help that I'm horribly on angle right here. So. Anytime you cut metal, don't pick it up right after you cut it. It's gonna be hot. I'm wearing leather gloves, um, <laughs> so it's not too bad, but still, don't do that. So this cut is um, not straight, unfortunately. So let me get um, like a disc on here. I think I have a disc in here. Let me see what I got. Like I've got deep, I've got burrs. I've got carbide burrs. I could do that. Hey, John. Okay, so let's let's see what we got here. You guys having fun? I'm having fun. You having fun? I'm loving this. Okay, what do we got for wheels in here? What what kind of wheels does a Dremel have? I got some wood stone there. I've got, how well do these work? I've got sanding wheels. I don't think the sanding wheels will work too well on metal. Yeah, I don't know if these wheels would be good enough. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just put the carbide back in because it's carbide. Nothing wrong with carbide. I mean, I could put an end mill in here. If we want to be totally uh, baller, I could put an end mill in here. But it, it, will this work, guys? Oh, that no, no, ain't gonna work. Nope. I mean, if I could use the air compressor, I've got it. I've got a die grinder here, but I'm not firing up the air compressor this late. There you go, carbide. Go carbide. I like carbide, you like carbide, we all like carbide. The problem with carbide is it sends, it sends chips everywhere. Or it sends little, not really chips, but you're getting shit everywhere with carbide. That's the downside. The rails hardened? They are hardened. That's why you need to use like carbide or a cutoff wheel. So this went downward, so this should go downward. Nope. Dang it, it's gonna go upward either way. That goes that way, so it's gonna go up. I don't know which way this goes.
this way. Yeah, okay, that's going down. Yeah. Camper on it. Flip it over. Do the other side. Wow, that is totally not flat at all. <laughs> okay, so how am I gonna do that? Yeah, that is that is crooked as shit. That is crooked as shit, y'all. I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Try not to damage the rail in the process here. It's an LDO rail, they're not cheap. There we go, okay. Stanford, we're good. Good enough. F it. Does it really need to be? I don't know. I don't know how far out the. Because um, the problem is on. The, actually, you're right. With these ones, they probably doesn't need to matter as much, because on the standard one, it has to fit in. Um, where's the X Y points? On the standard one, there's like little. The X Y the rail for the X has to fit into these notches. I don't think the uh, the kit has those. So actually, I probably didn't even need to cut this down to begin with. Anyways, content. I mean, you guys got to watch me do some metal working. That's the first time I've took a grinder to metal in a while. Quite a while. Yeah, I probably didn't even need to do any of that. I didn't need to buy this. I didn't, well, oh, whatever. Too late now. I mean, it's good to have this. I'll bring this to, to, to Earth, and if you want it, let me know. No, I won't. No, I won't. Source my own rail. I did source my own rail. That's why I had to cut it down. But then I'm realizing I probably didn't have to cut it down. Okay, so what I've done is... Um, I've ground this rail, but also I've gotten it wet. And I don't want it to rust. There we go. Use that bit for the tap mini. The kit came with it, so I don't need that. <laughs> Ugh. Do a distal toning karate chop it. I'll let you in a little secret, okay? Now this this may surprise you, okay? But this old Tony is a YouTuber, okay? And he has access to editing, okay? So because he has access to editing, it, he can actually hide the fact that he's superhuman and he actually does chop it. Um, but it's it, there's like a split second. He screwed up in one of his videos where when he hits it, he actually hits it hard enough that it actually fractures the metal, and he left one frame of that in. Normally he edits that out. Um, to kind of hide the fact that he's not a mere mortal. Um, he had us that out, you know, just so, you know, the rest of us don't feel inadequate. Um, but that that's his secret, okay? So, unfortunately, I can't do that. I've tried, doesn't work. Do two slicer versus two thyler make any difference? In my opinion, no. Um, the only difference it's gonna mean is um, I prefer beefier bearings, they last longer. That's me. 
Okay, so this comes in a bunch of shipping oil. It is oil, not, not lube, wipe it off. But wipe it off, don't clean it off, because if you clean it off, then your rail is gonna rust because it's got nothing to protect it from the elements. How big is in tall boy? It depends on the configuration. Technically, I have like 400 millimeters of Z travel, uh, but depending on the tool head you're running, um, the hot end you're running, how high the bed is up off of the mount, you get anywhere from 280 to 295. Um, I think in the configuration it was before I tore it down was around 385, um, stuff would hit at that point. So. So I gotta wait for that to finish. God damn it. it. Didn't stick to the bed. It didn't stick to the bed. How did you not stick to the bed? Stop. Yes, I wanna cancel the print. I thought you were supposed to have a spaghetti detector. Aren't you supposed to have a spaghetti detector? Yeah. There's a lot of spaghetti in there. You weren't detecting shit. Do I need to put a brim on it? Do you need a brim? Print again. Got all that, it's a spaghetti. Spaghetti. You need to set your bamboo hotter. I do, I print it quite hot. I print at 110 usually. Although this profile might not, but it's normal ASA, so it should be fine. My, my normal uh, ABS profile is 110 on the bed and 260 on the hot end. Print just fine on my Trident. I know the problem is I don't have a Trident out here that works. That Trident don't work. Uh, the VZBot, I don't have a profile out here. Um, the LDO is off because it annoys me because the fan keeps kicking on because it's so hot in here all the time. So the fan like turns on, turns off, turns on, turns off. Tallboy doesn't have filament in it. Um, the only two printers that are ready to print are the rat rig, but the rat rig of the profile is in the basement. So that's why I use the bamboo. Because usually you hit print, but it's been a finicky son of a bitch lately. <sighs> disabled ladder. Yeah, ladder is disabled on that machine. It does nothing. It's a waste. All it does is waste time at the start. So now here's the problem. Because the first thing I need to do to get this whole shebang started is put the rail on that. Or actually, no, we can start putting the gantry together. Let's start putting the gantry together. Let's put the gantry together. So, we got this. I don't know if they have a manual for this. It's running land. That's actually on the network right now. I put it on the network uh, when I did the last update because I wanted to try some stuff with it. So that is actually on the network right now, unfortunately. I should take it off. Normally I keep it off, but the problem is you have to put it back on to... Uh... So are there any like documentations to this, guys? No, I don't think there's any documentations. I I've got this. What's the Y joint? Got A, B, left, right, X, Y joint. What is the Y joint? CF spacers, where's the CF spacers go? On the, their GitHub. Where's their GitHub? Oh, there's the GitHub, okay. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber gantry kit. I need to print parts, apparently. I did not know I needed to print parts. Okay, so we might not be doing this. <laughs> we might have to print parts for this first. Shit. I thought it didn't need to print parts because I see all the spacers in here and I'm like, oh, it's got spacers like how I did it. So we might have to print parts. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we get, okay. Load. I downloaded you, you should load. There we go, okay. Yeah, I don't see any printed parts. Unless those are, okay. So I'm not doing the front. The front here, we're doing the mod. There's, and we're not doing the, the gantry, we're using the normal gantry. We're not using the tubes, okay? 
So we're using the normal gantry, we're using the normal extrusions, we're not doing the tubes. Why would you do tubes on here? This is a complete waste because these don't have any movement to them other than Z. So there's no point doing tubes there. Okay, let's put our AB drives together. Packing list, okay, AB drives and idlers, okay. That's pretty cool, A drive, B drive. Okay, let's get to it. So we're not doing micro switches because we're doing sensorless. Okay, so let's, let's do this. So let me get my AB motor mounts here so I can take these apart and reuse everything as I put them back together. Sweet. And let's get this camera set up here. You like this nice work surface, this, this rich OSB? It, it's, 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 it's native birch. And it throws off my white balance quite badly. Okay. Take care, Vaughn. I'm reusing the bearings. Why? Because I have them right here. That's why. If any of them seem kind of funky, I'll swap them out. Um, but plan is to reuse the bearings. Maybe we can't, I would assume so. Wood's one of those things that it's kind of big and heavy and not expensively dense. So shipping it across country, you know, if you got it here, use it here type thing. It's like how everyone was freaking out about toilet paper. Remember remember during the, the Rona, everyone was freaking out about toilet paper? And it's, it's, we weren't running out. It's just they can't ship so much of it at once because it's, it's not expensive for the density of it and you can only fit so much in a truck. So people were just freaking out and like clearing out the stores every time they got inventory. But there's a ton of inventory, the issue was just transportation it. Maybe I will replace these eye alerts, so they're a little grungy looking. get the bearings out, F695s. Yeah, so I got a whole bunch of bearings here that I could swap out if I need to. None of them are RS, unfortunately, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, so we've got all these fun little screws and standoffs, and look at all these parts, ooh. Fancy, fancy. And I went with red because these have red anodizing, so obviously I went with red. That's why we changed it up. Okay. So we got two of these, just two, okay. So. Are these exactly the same? Okay, so, okay. So they have, it looks like, it's gonna be fun. So one of them has two slots for a micro switch which I'm not using the micro switch, okay? So I'm not using the micro switch because we're doing sensorless. And that's gonna be on the bottom. Okay, so the one with the slots is on the bottom. And then we've got our standoffs here. So there's two standoffs and they look like there's spacing differences.
So I only have two standoffs. Should I, I should have more standoffs. So I'm gonna need standoffs for the one side and standoffs for the other side. And... Okay, they got a bunch of screws here. I've got all the screws, it comes with all the screws. Oh, wait, no, these, these are different standoffs. These standoffs are black. Okay, here we go, there we go. That makes more sense, okay. Okay, so we got shims. Got carbon fiber here too. These are nice, this is actually a pretty nice kit. Got little pins, okay, cool. Okay, so now I need M5 shim. So let's look for M5 shim. Three that, 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 no, no, that, no, no, I don't see any shims. Did they give me shims? Do I gotta source my own shims? Shim, shimmy, shim, shim. Shimmy, shim? Shim, shim, shim. M PM5 by 8 four piece. What the heck is that? I'm assuming that's not shims. Those aren't shims. M3, whatever these are, M2.5. Okay, actually there was a, there was a parts list here, okay. Graphite nylon M5 shim, yeah. Graphite nylon M5 shim. Okay, so we do have shims. I just have to find them. I've got tubes. Found them. Okay. Ooh. Okay, these are little. They're graphite shims. <laughs> graphite shims. Okay. Okay, so it looks like you put so that is the orientation. Okay, so we got one of these. So we put bearing. Bearing. Wow, these are, yeah, that one's, that one's gone. Okay, shim. And just kind of, there's like a little, yeah, it just sits there, I guess. Okay, cool. This is kind of, okay, so what holds it in from the bottom? Should I, I should be putting a, sc a screw in from the bottom to hold these, unless these don't have screws to hold them in. No, oh, they do, there's screw holes. They just kind of sit in there for now. Okay, yeah, that's super annoying. Okay, that's that, okay. Um, oh, no, M2.5s, yeah, M2.5s from the bottom uh, with the little, okay, so M2.5s, where are the M2.5s? M2.5 by six. 2.5 by six, there we go, okay. By four? 2.5 by six, oh, it hits these ones, okay, it's these ones. Ooh. Where are my trays? Actually, yeah, I got these trays here. Um, um, I think these are leftover parts. One of these is leftover from the, yeah. These are all leftover from the, uh, the Ultimaker. So I'll sort these out later. 
Um, I'll sort these out later. And by later, I mean this box will probably get thrown out. Okay. Like I printed all these trays. I need to print a whole bunch of these trays. I need to print a bunch of these trays in different colors. And then what I need to do is build a little rack so I could slide these in and out. And then I can put a little name tag on the front. So for ongoing projects, I can slide them in and out. And then what I need to do is get magnets on the bottom of these, like the, the sticker magnets that we use for beds and put them on the bottom of these. There, that's what I need to do. Thoughts on Dragon, high flow versus ultra high flow. Basically like, just get whatever one you need. Do you need ultra high flow? If not, don't bother with it. I think people kind of overestimate what they need flow rate wise. At least that's my personal opinion. Yeah, people tend to think they need more than what they really need a lot of the time, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, but it, it do be how it is, though. It do be how it is, though. In my, in my humble opinion. Are you doing anything yet? No, your bed sensor failed. Print again. Try. Do the thing I tell you to do and shut up. <sighs> okay. So we got that. So there is a bit of float here. They do allow a little bit of float. I don't know if they're supposed to, but they do. Because they only have a shim on the bottom. They don't have a shim on the top. So it does float a little bit. Oh well, it is what it is. Okay. So then we got what M330 comes through there with the little shim. Okay, M330. 330, six piece. Use a good printer. It's the only one with filament in it right now. Probably should. Okay, so now we got that one. Morons. Well, the problem is that boron's off. That one needs fixing. Um, that one doesn't have filament in it. And the ones that I actually use are inside. So that's that's why they're not being used because it's they're not the ones I normally use. Um, that's kind of the problem. Wait, what the heck? Okay. What? Did I do this backwards? I did this backwards. Shoot, I did this backwards. One second. So yeah, that's that's my problem. It's the ones that I use are inside. Okay, so you actually go in this one. Oh, I'm a help by pushing the right hole. Having that problem apparently. There we go. There we go. And now they don't wobble anymore. There we go. Yeah, it's got a broken wire. The that bamboo is faulty. It's got the uh, the issue with the uh, 
bed sensors are drifting. It's a known issue with the machine. I did a fix that fixed it, but when I moved it out here, I think the tape came loose, so now I have to take it apart and fix it again. Just haven't gotten around to it. Once it gets going, it works fine. It's just starting up. It just likes to be a little annoying. Okay. So this one goes in here. This one goes in here. And then this one goes in here. Here. Okay. It's sticking this time. Um, I don't know. I told it to print with a brim. The issue with the bed sensor, which it'll do it if it's cold. Once you heat it up, it actually seems to work better. But if you try from a cold start, it freaks out. So if you heat soak it, it's funny. If you heat soak it, it works. So we put a carbon fiber tube on each one of these. Easy peasy. And then we put two more bearings. This one's look good. On this one. Then we put a shim on top. Okay. I put the top plate on and the top plate has a little cutout. Okay, this one gets an M2.5 flat head. That smaller M2.56 flathead is probably this bag. I believe so. Yep. Even smaller Allen key. Nope, that's too big. Here's my. Sm I don't. Uh, I gotta get the. Nope, I need smaller. Do I have smaller than that on this? I do. There we go. Okay, and then M2.5 with one of these. Well, let me build the kit first before you guys run off and buy it. Like personally, I would, you know, I would like to see it in use and functional before putting money on it, but you do you. I'm not your dad, I'm not your mom, I'm not your boss. You're, you're all independent peoples. Okay, one point, okay, I'll line up the motors later, okay. Ah, oh, dang it, I took the... So the thing is, carbon fiber isn't—is is it good under compression? Because these are compre these are carbon fiber standoffs. Probably would want metal, wouldn't you? But I don't know. Okay, 
that's that tighten the screws and there you go that's the one okay so let's line up this So CNC parts. Um, I don't know if there's, well, some of it's CNC. They, they're carbon fiber. So there's one. Voila. Now we do the other one. Okay, so this one, we need that like that. Okay. Yeah, okay, so that goes like that. Okay. So we get this guy. We get the bearings that look healthy, which some of these are. Some of these aren't. How about if I line them up the right way? Okay. We get a. That guy goes there. Okay. That goes on there. These, one of these. One of these. Foreign parts are supposed to be us. I mean, they're designed with ABS in mind. You can make them out of whatever you want. Your money may vary. I mean, I've done this myself. I, I My V2.4, my most used printer, I went and machined my own carbon fiber parts just because I wanted to try it out. Okay, so this one is the bottom. So this one doesn't have anything. Okay, so that's that. Three, with three of these. One, two, oh, no one. Well, Chaotic Lab is, is Victory Tech, basically, as far as I'm aware. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Chaotic Lab is just Big Tree Tech. Okay. Put the tubes on, get my tubes. Okay. And then we put some more bearings on. the spacer that one's bad this one's good spacer okay put the bottom plate on Where did I put that really little one? Oh, it's right here. There we go. Budsy, thank you for coming to member. Cheers. the annoying part. Okay. That 
goes that way, and then this goes on top. You got schooled at, what'd you get schooled at? Did you learn did? Okay, yeah, these are definitely, yeah, these ones have uh, Loctite on them. Hopefully I can loosen them without breaking them. It's done. There we go. Now they have this right here. I don't know if I'm gonna use this. I don't know what the parts look like for that. I've got, it's this block right here. Let me take a look here. If I can get it. Oh, come on, get out of here. Ow, pinched myself. So how does this attach? So, okay, so it does do both, okay. So it's got attachment for the, uh, so how does that screw on? Does that just, what screws it on? What holds it on? Do you tell me? Did I miss it? Yeah, it just skips it. So it shows that right there. Um, scroll down, scroll down. There's the XYs. Okay, my bamboo is making some really funky noises right now. And I don't know what it's doing. I just, I just wanna see what's, oh, here we go. Okay, cool. Um, Anti-bending steel wire. It comes with an anti-bending steel wire. Oh my God. I don't see any steel wire. Okay. So I just want to know what holds that in to the frame. Like what screw should I be using? Eh, don't tell me. Like I have it here. I, I'm assuming it uses M2.5s because everything else seems to be M2.5. Just... Okay, I'll just put M2.5. Do I got any more M2.5s? Flatheads or something? M2.5 16 mil? 2.5 16 mil? Yeah. Okay, cool. I guess it, I guess it uses these. Okay. This thing really wants me to use CAN bus. This really, okay, I guess I gotta figure out how to get a CAN bus board in the next week. So there we go. There is the AB motor mounts. So that goes there and that goes there. You got your crossbar across the back. So that's actually pretty nice. Those actually look pretty cool. Um, and the red, I think, goes pretty good with the, the red I picked out. It's it, This is brighter in person. Um, this camera probably doesn't have the best white balance and whatnot, but it should be pretty good. Okay, why are you making clunking noises? No, you're just making clunking noises. Are you? Is it the Phil AMS making the noises? What are you doing? Oh, whatever. Okay.
Well, I wanted to put the gantry together. I wanted to put the X gantry together first before all this tube stuff. How much does it take to assemble the XY joints? Those look pretty simple. Okay, before we do that, um, let's try out this delicious whiskey I bought today. And I've got my, I got my, my Fetus cup, a little Fetus cup that they sent me, which I guess that's what we're drinking out of, because that's what I got. So it's nice and chilled, because it's a cinnamon whiskey. Ah, it didn't come off. There we go. Come on, come on, come on off. No, it didn't peel all the way around. Ah, I hate when it does that. If only I had some sort of cutting instrument. Where did I put my knife? Where did I actually put my knife? Where did I put my knife? Found a pen. Preventing me from wetting my whistle. What's going on here? Oh, it's just a, oh, it's a screw on cap. <laughs> happy anniversary, who's happy? Who's anniversary? I think it's loud, it's a bamboo. See, the trick is you sell a printer that's stupidly loud compared to every other printer on the market, but it's good in a bunch of other ways. And so eventually you can come out with a version of the printer that does exactly what it does, but quieter, and it's an upsell. Haha, <laughs> business. Your anniversary, congratulations. So this is premium small batch Double barrel whiskey blended with natural cinnamon flavors create a taste that stands alone among the pack. Unleash your inner wolf with every taste. Stay wild. Ingredients, cane whiskey, cane sugar. Oh, this actually is bad. Okay, I'm gonna have a little bit of this. It's gonna be bad for my diet. Um, but it's Canadian whiskey, cane sugars, natural flavors. Produced, blended in a bottle of Wolf Hill Distillery, Amherstburg, Ontario. So it's actually cinnamon. Oh, that's good. There is no, there is. Okay, when I was in Quebec, I bought some like maple, um, maple whiskey. This reminds me a lot of that. This reminds me a lot. Oh, this, you know how like, some chick drinks are like dangerous because you don't taste the liquor. This is like that. I never got to share an adult bedroom at Murph. I have to fix that at Rocky Mountain. We should. I'm going to Earth. I've got like, what, three weeks to Earth. Um, so I'm going to Earth and I'm going to Smurf. So if you're in England um, for Smurf, I will be there. I'm, I'm flying across the pond to go, go hang out with the Brits. Diet soda only for me. I got my case of Coke Zero. I, I have one Coke Zero a day. That's my, that's my one vice I allow myself now. One, one can of Coke Zero a day. not gonna make it to earth. Yeah, here's the thing. My opinion, when it comes, okay, so here's the thing. We've now got three Rep Rap Fests in North America. Now, there's also maker fairs and whatnot. Like if you, there's the um, uh, Orange County Maker Fair, there's um, LTX if you're in Vancouver area, you have Open Sauce, 
um, which I really want to go to next year. I've already bought a ticket. I just got to figure out how to make myself that an actual thing. Um, it, down in, in San Francisco, there's a ton of cool shit now for like makers and whatnot. But when it comes to the three North American MRFs, okay, or MRFs, okay, you got East Coast Rep Rap Fest, Midwest Rep Rap Fest, Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, okay? So Rocky Mountain is in Colorado. The Midwest is just outside of Chicago, basically. It's in Elgin County, whatever, or wherever it's at. It's like it's near South Bend, basically. Um, is the closest big landmark you may know. And then you got um, East Coast Rep Rap Fest is in Bel Air. If you can only go to one, go to whatever one you can go to. Simple as that. If you can only go to one, go to whatever one you can go to. Simple as that. Um, if you have a budget and you can only go to one, um, personally, Rocky Mountain. This is now to be fair, Rocky Mountain there was their first one last year. Okay, um, but it's in Colorado. Well, it's it's in it's like an hour out of Colorado, right? You fly into you fly into Colorado Airport, you rent a car, and it's a forty-five minute drive to the venue. Okay, and you stay in hotels there. Um, the thing is, Colorado is a hub for a lot of airlines, so flights are cheap. Um, they have a really nice venue. There's hotels in the area. Um, oh yeah, Denver, Denver, Colorado. Sorry, I'm not American. It's, it's Colorado's Denver to me. Um, and it, it's they have a really nice setup. Um, the organizers, oh, the organizers, all of them are great. I'm not trying to make it sound like the other ones suck compared to Rocky Mountain, but in, in my opinion, Rocky Mountain was probably was really good. I've been to all three. Now, granted, the only one I've gone to twice is is Mitt Murph. Earth will be the second time I'm going to Earth. Um, but if you're going to go to one, I think Rocky Mountain's kind of like the one to go to if you can only go to one and you're traveling regardless. So if you're if you're within driving distance, any of them, go to them. Okay, simple as that. Make a date. If you're going on a day trip, go to the Saturday. Okay, the Friday is a setup day for a lot of them. And Sunday is usually a teardown day, so you only get like a half day. Um, but if you're, if, if you're within driving distance of any of them, just go drive. But if you have to make a trip, if you have to make a trip of it, and you can only go to one, I would say Rocky Mountain. That's kind of my recommendation. Um, Murph is very much a party. It's very organized chaos, disorganized chaos. Um, Earth is a lot more, I wanna say businessy, but Earth has a lot more organization to it, um, but it's less party atmosphere. Uh, Rocky Mountain seemed to kind of have a nice mix of the two, I think. Um, and then Smurf, I haven't been to Smurf yet. Nobody's been to Smurf yet because it's the first one ever and it's in Oxford, England, and it's probably gonna be a blast. Um, so I've got my I've got my ticket, I'm, I'm flying. I'm actually flying out of my town. It's surprisingly, it's cheaper to fly out of Windsor than it is out of Detroit. Um, and it's cheaper to fly Air Canada, which hopefully I don't get stuck on a seat with full of barf. This is really good. Oh, this is gonna be bad. That's gonna be bad. Okay. What time are we at? Oh, we got time for the XY joints. Okay. So let's do this. So we need M 2.5 by 16 mil. 2.5 by 16 mil. M 2.5 by eight. M 2.5 by 16. There we go. Have a good party hangout vibe, but not super crazy. Um, yeah, like it, I, I think it's more if you're a vendor or you're, you're showing there and you can like stay after hours is when Murph becomes more of a party. Um, Earth kind of like everyone goes their own way after the show, kind of. At least if I remember correctly. Okay, so. Are these the same? Are these exactly the same pieces? I believe so, okay. So we got a Y joint. So this is the left X, Y, okay. So that goes there. That goes there. I'm gonna wear the blue makeup and bleach your beard white for Smurf. No, no, I'm not it's all natural, baby. I'm, I'm going gray up top enough already as is. Don't need any encouragement.
Alright, so we'll put this. Okay, so where do these go? So this goes this one. This is so weird to like I'm trying to follow pictures. Okay, so. Okay, that one. That one. Assembly, this bolt is used to align components and will be removed in a later step. Okay, sure. And that one. Okay. So, put that in and then we drop that metal piece on it. We got two of these. So counterbore, the counterbore diameter on the left XY joint is larger. Which counter, what? Oh, the metal piece, the metal piece, or the, the printed, or not the printed part, the carbon fiber part. Carbon fiber part, okay. Okay, so which one is this? So let's, let's look at that. Okay, so this one's larger. So this is the left one. Okay, so left one's larger, okay. And then I put an M5 shim in, M5 shim? Yep, M5 shim. Okay. Okay, and then all the standoffs for the bearings are black. Okay. So this goes here. I'm just gonna get that, screw that in, get it started. Hey, the bamboo's done. This one, screw that in. Okay, all the idler standoffs are red. Okay, and it looks like okay, so I am not using a tooth idler, I'm using uh, stacked idlers for this. So I don't know if I, I may have to shim this, we'll see. Um, or I may just let it float. Yeah, there's a lot of play there. So I'm probably gonna have to, um, one second here. Hey, the bamboo's done, yippee. Yeah, there's a lot of play there. So I'm probably going to have to um, put a shim on each end. I think that's how I did it before. So shim, bearing, bearing, shim. And then that shim. There we go. Two GT tons. There are multiple specifications for the two. A 10 millimeter high one is recommended. Shims need to be added to both ends of the other if the height is okay. So let's see if our height is, where is my measuring thingamabobber? Is, it should be in here. No, I didn't put it away. So now I don't know where it's at. Um, where's my measuring thingamabobber? It's in my drawer. I, okay, cool. We're gonna use a, a micrometer for this because why not so how much are two bearings yeah it's eight mil so yeah so shim on each side okay cool 
okay. So that's that, okay. Tighten the screws, I can do that. Also pick up a bunch of screws. Gotta like hold it, cause they're... Uh, okay. So we got two bearings, a shim, and then the counterbore diameter on the right is larger. So I need the one with the smaller counterbore. So that one, that one, push shim. Okay. So the one with the smaller. And it goes on like that. Okay. And then it's M2.5 by 6 with these guys. Sweet. There we go. Yeah, I could have left the rails long. I did not need to cut those rails down. I'm a, I'm a big genius. I, I. Is there a functional advantage to tooth over stacked? Technically, yes. Um, less wear on the belts, and you have less of a chance of the tooth pattern showing in the prints. But if you properly tension your belts, which means don't over tighten them, which a lot of people do. Um, you shouldn't really have an issue. I like to go with smooth bearings because they got beefier bearings in the bearings. So they, they, tend, they should last longer and they shouldn't um, detonate as easily. Okay, so let's do the other one. But before we do that, I'll have a drinky drink. Because think about it. How long is your belt in contact with the bearing? Okay, so yes, yeah, so you have teeth, areas of teeth and no teeth, but you have so many teeth in contact at a time as that bearing goes over, you really shouldn't see a ripple if your belts are properly tensioned. So what ends up happening is people over tension their belts. And when you tighten your belts way too much, that's when you see those issues. Okay, so this goes like that. So we got one in here. like that okay and then my phone goes off and I check my phone and who is oh god I gotta delete my Instagram I only have an Instagram because I need to make an Instagram account so I can make a, a threads account and I don't use either and I keep I got to turn off notifications it's so annoying okay dead platform who dis one so we get bearing or shim bearing bearing shim shim and then that goes against that Dragonflame gifted five community memberships. Cheers. Cheers. 
Appreciate it. Okay, there we go. Oh wait, no, this doesn't have it. This doesn't have it, because this one's just a bearing. This one's just a bearing. This one's just a bearing, so I don't have that. I don't have that. Ah. What am I doing? What am I doing? Idler standoff. Okay, so is this? That one is it. Okay, okay, I did this backwards. I did this backwards. Okay, that's why that felt weird. Okay. Okay, that's why. So this is the bearing. Uh, that's red. Okay. So this one's the red one. This one goes like that. With, uh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, where is, uh oh, uh, did I lose one of those shims? I did. Hopefully I have extras. Hopefully they gave me extras of these shims. I mean, I have extra shims. I think they're all just one mil shims. There we go. Okay. Now this, there we go. Okay, so this shim, bearing, bearing, shim. Bearing, bearing, shim. Shim. Okay, top plate. There we go. And then we put those in. Okay, there we go. That makes sense. I've been salt CNC tap. No! We're working on XY joints and AB joints or AB motor mounts. We haven't got to. CNC tap cut. CNC tap will probably be next week, um, by the looks of things, because we're getting near the end. Other than adding bling. Um, it lightens the weight of the gantry that moves on the Z. Also, technically, it is more rigid than the plastic one, so you should, on paper, get better input shaper results, because it is more rigid. Um, like, Technically, your, your AB motor mounts don't move, right? So it doesn't really matter what they're made out of. Your XY joint will be lighter. Um, I have the XY joints over there. I don't have a scale out here. I can run inside and grab one and we can compare weights. So your X, Y joints do move. So this does cut down the weight a bit. Okay, so that is that, that is that. Spins freely, everything spins freely. Booyah, there's your X, Y joints. And that is stuff we're not doing. Okay, so. I got some extra bits here. I don't know why, but we do. Cool. So. For comparison, here's the stock XY joint. Stock joint, carbon fiber joint. Oh yeah. Let me let me go find a scale. Do I have a scale out here? No, my scales are inside. Let me go get a scale and we'll see what this actually does weigh out to. How much how much weight you're saving here. You want it to go sensorless, why no why you need tap? Tap is for the Z. You can't do sensorless Z. Two reasons. One, the actuation force is what I would consider not safe enough uh, for your Z. Too close you're, you're too too risky of a crash scenario. Two Centerless isn't accurate enough. Now for your, think about it, when you home XY, that's just to kind of let your printer know where it is in the XY realm. If your XY is out a bit when you start a print, it doesn't really matter. 
because you don't rehome during a print usually, right? Unless you, 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 you crash or something and you have to rehome and resume. You usually don't rehome during a print. So even if your XY homing was out a millimeter, plus minus a millimeter every time you home the printer, as long as your bed, you know, as long as your, your limits were, you know, a printer wouldn't travel out of bounds and your bed, you know, was a light a millimeter oversized, it would never affect your print quality ever. With Z, you need it bang on. Pretty much you need it the most accurate you can. Sensorless homing isn't accurate enough. It's only accurate to a full step. So basically, yeah, it's, it's not reliable enough um, and your actuation force is too much. And hey puppy, I'm gonna walk and talk while I go find a scale. Okay, let's see, what do I got for scales? I don't know if you can still hear me talking. See what we got here. Let's see what we're working with. Headphones turned off. Uh oh. F. F. Yeah, I know F. It. Not connected. Connect. Connect. These last less than three hours now. Apparently, they last, last less than three hours now. Uh, AirPods couldn't connect. Turn off Bluetooth. Turn on Bluetooth. Oh, we're back. Okay, so the standard 2.4 or whatever um, XY joints printed in ABS standard Voron settings with the bearings and all the screws. Um, obviously, not the rails and whatever. 85 grams. Chaotic Lab carbon fiber ones, fully assembled, all the screws and bearings. 48 grams. So what, 35 gram difference? Roughly a 35 gram difference, yep. Yep, 47, 47, 47, yeah, so about 35 gram difference. Now, here's the thing. Is, is, is 35 grams times two, 70 grams. Is, is 70 grams affecting your print that much? So for those that are gram chasers, these are an option. They also look really cool. So that is that. Um, oh, hey, you finished. Good job. You did the thing you're supposed to do. You get a gold star. I will allow you to be powered up. Okay, so I think we're gonna call it there because we'll put the, the rails on next stream. Um, yeah, we'll put the rail on next stream. We'll get the gantry back in and we'll start figuring out tap. Uh, got a jam in AMS printing Hydra mod now is it worth it the Hydra mod yes in my opinion if you have an AMS you should be putting Hydra in it um, that's something I got to do on that AMS doesn't have Hydra in it my other one does I've got it printed I need to swap it out that will be on a stream on a day when I don't know what I'm doing for Zed oh yeah for the for like these ones it doesn't matter like these it don't matter because these are these don't move like, okay, they move in the Z. whoop do you do You don't need to worry about Excels there. But for your XY joints, these are pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think these are pretty cool. Um, and you get this little thingy if you're, if you're running CAN bus. Oh, you have to screw this in before you slot it in. Or is that a lock? 
Oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, one second. This goes in like that. This comes off. And then this screws in like that. Okay. There you go. So we have some screws left over. I don't know what they're for. And I got some extra nuts and whatnot. But voila! It's a magnifique. C'est très bon. When it's toasty upgrade, whenever I get the Revo um, high temp stuff in, which should be in this week, but it'll probably be after we finish these upgrades. So VZBot um, Tuesdays will continue, obviously, until the VZBot is operational. Uh, morale will, you know, the beatings will um, continue until morale improves, that kind of thing. Um, afterwards, uh, this, this, this Friday, um, I want to have some fun. We've got an original Ultimaker running fully stock everything. We gonna try speed benches on it. That's what we're doing Friday. Um, and then we'll continue with this next Saturday. So, yep. When you mount it back on the rails. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll see. Cause I don't know if I gotta use like the stuff that, like the normal stuff, like where's, where's. So this is the fun thing with Tallboy. I've got a silver rear extrusion for the gantry. That just goes on like that. Everything still lines up perfectly. That's good. Yeah, perfect. Okay. What? The top hole is two M5s. The bottom is an M5 and an M3. Instead of, because here it's it's two M5s and M5, M3. But on the bottom here, it's M5, M3. Instead of just two M5s. So they kind of didn't need to do that. It should be two M5s. Yeah, it's, it, it's different size. They should have extended this and just two M5s. It shouldn't be M5, M3. Silverback, yeah, Silverback, for those that remember what this was originally called before we called it Tall Boy. Should I have more of the wolf head? I'm gonna have more of the wolf head. It's delicious. It's normal, isn't it? No, I believe it's two, cause like this rail has two M5s. It's two M5s. Yeah, it's M5s. Um, I, I threw them out already. I believe it's M5s. On the back extrusion, it's M5s on the top and bottom. Um, on the side extrusions where your, your X or your Y is, it's two M5 on top, but then on the bottom it's M5 and M3 because you need the room for the, the rail. So you can't, there is no room for two M5s on the bottom because there's like, you have to have a little cutout for the rail, I believe, or something. There's, there's a reason. I think it's just the, the way they designed it. I think it's like, oh, the bottom needs M5, M, M, M5 and M23, so they just did it. stuff's delicious okay so we're gonna do the giveaway in five minutes and then uh, we'll switch it to Nero after dark for a bit I think and then we'll call it although I kind of want to I'm I'm on I'm in the middle of two Baldur's Gate playthroughs yeah I know um, because one I'm 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 started a bad character playthrough like the like dark urge giving into the urge kind of playthrough and I, I, I feel bad for hurting the NPC's feelings so much. So I, I have another playthrough that I've been playing more of that's, you know, just being nice. So that's kind of the two things I got playing right now. <laughs> have a drink for me, 3.5 years, congrats. Need a Baldur's Gate emote. I have played that game more in the past month than I have any game, other than like World of Warcraft. I can't believe how much that game sucks you in. Like if you like role-playing games, you gotta give it a try. You you have to give it a try if you like role-playing games. It's just so good. It is so good. Summon my companion. Okay, I don't play any, I, none of the classes I'm rolling with in any of my parties have like summons usually. Except for Minsk, he's got Boo. You always gotta have Boo.
M4, five on the back. Oh, I know, Ranger. I haven't played Ranger. Um, I, I've, I've beaten the game as a sorcerer. Um, I've beaten the game as a paladin. Um, my current playthrough, I'm playing as a bard, a uh, College of Sword bard. Um, and my, my evil Dark Urge uh, character is also a sorcerer. But I may, I may not finish that playthrough. I may restart it as a, I want to try Monk. The thing is, I, I have real hard time try, playing as a character that one of the companion characters already is classed as. So, because the thing is, you, the problem is you, you got to approach the game realizing you are a party of four. What your character is spec as doesn't really matter because it's all about like the group of your characters. Because here's the thing. Your, your, your character isn't the most powerful. You're just a, it's D and D, right? It's D and D rules. So you could be like, oh, I, I want to be this character, but I got this. It's like, no, it played like, it's fine. If your main character is like a complete support character, because you have two people running around with big swords that bonk stuff on the head, they do the damage. You, you, your main character doesn't need to be the main character when it comes to combat. So yeah. So like my, my first playthrough, I played as a um, sorcerer and all I did was just buff, cast haste on everything. Ca cast haste on Carlac and Lozelle and just let him run around and bonk things a lot. Quill 18, no idea who that is. So I just like, no matter what, I just like having a sorcerer in the party just for, for dual haste, just Haste on the two, I, I like a, one support person, a sorcerer for haste, and then AOE, and then two people with big sticks is kind of how I, I run around. A bard. Bard is fun. Um, let me pull it up here. There, there are, because you get different interactions depending on um, your class. So you get like different like choices of like how, how you like different, you, get, you, you talk to somebody, you get a bunch of responses, right? You can pick. Um, but depending on your, your character race and class and background, if you're playing as Dark Urge or not, you have different choices. So if, if you're playing as like a bard, you know, um, you know, you, you have options like, oh, you know, in your eulogy, I'm going to call you a twat soul. Like it, it, it's, it's fun. Bard is so awesome. You have so many, like, just the problem is it gets you in trouble a lot though. Being a bard kind of gets you in trouble a bit. <laughs> you, you end up saying things you shouldn't sometimes. <laughs> a Baldur is playing. The problem, I can't watch people play Baldur's Gate though. I try, like I've watched a few people like, like highlight videos of people playing, but I can't watch somebody like do a full playthrough. I can't, so. Bards than me. The thing is, it's remember all of the classes are D and D classes. So like, I'm playing College of Sword Bard. I run around. I'm 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 stabbing people left and right. I'm loving it. And then it's like I finish all my bardic abilities, and then it's like cool. I have all this these spells I can use still, like all these AOE crowd control spells. It's like oh, I could put a ward down to prevent people from going places, or I could put the ward down under their feet, and it just blows up in a big AOE. So let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Also, another thing um, that I absolutely, so when you start playing, your, your characters kind of look bleh, and then about midway through act two, your characters get start getting dripped out in the most awesome armor ever. Like the armor in the game is insane. Like the detail on some of the armor, like this character, I, I love her armor, um, Dame Aelin. But like, even like the evil armor with like all the skulls and the horns and everything, like even like this is like beginning of act two armor, like the detail on it. Like I love the armor in that game. The, the detail in the armor is insane. Am I into Baldur's Gate? I've, I've, I'm like almost like 175, 180 hours and I'm on like playthrough number three. Okay, let's do this giveaway. Let's do this giveaway. And then I'll turn the lights off. We'll go to Nero's after after hours or after dark. 
copy all these names. So remember, every stream we do give away a spool of Polymaker filament. So if you didn't get a chance to enter today, you'll have another chance on Tuesday. Um, so that will be the next one. Um, John, you didn't put a number. Okay. Um, somebody put a number up. Just, just start spamming numbers and I'll pick one at random. Riz, 24 is too high. I'm not gonna count to 24. Same with 69, that's too high. I'm not gonna count to 69, but it is the funny number. Four, I like four. One, one, two, three, four. There we go. So the winner will get an email from me after the stream ends with information on how to collect your filament from Polymaker. So congratulations to ba -ba -ba, Arnold Div. Arnold Div. Arnold Div. How are you supposed to pronounce that? Arnold Div. Congratulations, you have won yourself a spool of Polymaker filament. So after the stream ends, you will get an email from me uh, with information on how to collect your filament from Polymaker. So golf claps in chat, everyone golf claps in chat. Okay, let's turn the lights off. Boop. There we go. No, I normally don't turn this light off. This light I leave on, I think. There we go. There we go, near after dark. So this is usually on the Saturday stream. Um, it's kind of become a thing now where when the stream ends, we let it run for like half an hour and just shoot the shit about whatever. Um, Arnold Eve, Th this is some license plate spelling. You, you, you're trying to fit this on your license plate. That's what this is. So yeah, so that is, um, as far as we got, um, I need to fix that bamboo. I gotta fix that bamboo, it's getting annoying. What are we drinking? Uh, we have, it's chilly now because I had it in the freezer to chill it off, but it's a Wolfhead Distillery Cinnamon Flavored Whiskey, small batch. Um, it is, it's got like no bite at all. It's like, the I went to the LCBO today to pick up some coolers for the wifey and uh, they were like sampling it there. So it's always fun when you walk into a store and they hand you a shot. But um, basically she sold it as, Remember when you were a kid and you had a fireball and fireball sucked? This is fireball that doesn't suck. Do all my printers have LEDs? Um, some of them do. That one does, but it's off. Um, that one does on the tool head. That one does. The bamboo does. The Chidi does. Uh, the V0 does. The Rook doesn't. That Trident doesn't, but that Trident's getting pulled out of rotation and replaced with a VZ bot, and the VZ bot will. Tall boy, well, I've got some daylight sticks is going in tall boy. Um, so yeah. Are there public CAD for the metal tap? I believe they have a GitHub for the metal tap. There is a GitHub, um, or I believe I believe the CAD for this has been released. Um, so remember, the, the one that Buddy sent me for this, um, he sent me it with all the fixings. So I've got the rail, I've got the end stop, I've got all of it. When you buy this buy it from the Etsy store, it is literally just the metal parts. You have to print the parts and whatever, because it, it's just literally, a, it's a dude running it out of his house. It, it's, it's he, he doesn't have the, the ability to like sell full-fledged kits. He, just, he hooked me up with a full-fledged kit for demonstration purposes, but for he's just machining these out of his basically his house. Um, he's got a little CNC machine and whatnot. So the joys of small-scale fabrication. The Tico. I got. Where is the power? I gotta find where I put the power supply for the Tico. I gotta plug the Tico in. Where did I put the power supply for the Tico? I gotta plug it in. I don't know where I put the Tico power supply. I filmed the video with it, and then I moved it somewhere, and I don't know where I moved it. And I don't, yeah, I gotta, I gotta find where I put the Tico power supply. Cause I, I moved so much stuff around between, cause I've got like, I had like three builds on going, and I kind of don't know where I put everything. So I gotta find that. But I should have the Tico plugged in, cause it strobes when it's not being used. Um, yeah, I gotta find the power supply for the Tico. It'll, it'll show up, it'll show up. So 
basically you buy a tap kit and replace the plastic part with it. Basically, like it uses the same rail, it uses the same uh, little rail, the same end stop and whatever. It's like, I, I got a little, um, I've got the end stop here. It's a little, you know, light diode one. I've got the little rail here and all that. So yeah, it, all this, all this is basically instead of the printed parts, it's metal. All the sugar in it. Well, yeah, it's got cane sugar in it. So. Uh, I think I would mod the Tico to turn into a cough, pour over coffee maker. <laughs> I need to find the power supply. I gotta plug the Tico in. I gotta, I gotta get the Tico powered up. I don't know where I put the power supply for it. It's around here somewhere. It's, it's in the garage. I just don't know where. I've got boxes from like four different builds everywhere on the other side. At one point it was organized in here. That has lasted um, about as long as you figure it would have. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wonder if some joker at JPL has ever printed parts off a metal laser sintering machine. Yes. Um, fun fact, um, there, to date, there hasn't been a Voron in space. Okay, we've had, we've had a Voron in every continent. Um, I th believe if I remember correctly, a researcher has taken a V0 to Antarctica. I don't know if it made it on the continent or not, but a researcher did take a V0 to Antarctica. Um, but as of now, no Voron has left Earth. However, I can confirm parts printed on a Voron have gone to space and not like put on a rocket and gone up really high. I mean like legit space space. Um, so stuff printed on a Voron has made it to orbit. Um, I can't tell you exactly what. Uh, they couldn't tell me exactly what, uh, but what they did, I, I believe them. So stuff printed on a Voron has made it to space. And real space, not like, oh, we, we, we sent a, 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 a garlic bread up into space. No, it, it's not like a balloon thing, like space space. why it's called space because there's a lot of space above the balloon range here's the thing space doesn't actually ever really begin like okay the international space is what 60 miles up or 100 kilometers americans consider space 50 miles up or like what 80 kilometers but the thing is after like, what is it like 40 miles? Like the air just density just drops. So it's like, it's like here's space, but like here's also space and here's also space. It's like, eh. Is the sky black and you die outside? Yes, okay, it's space. Let's see what's going on on Twitter. What's going on? What What's the current 3D printing drama? What is currently going on on Twitters? Uh, X-15 is considered having been to space. Yep, X-15 has gone to space. It's reached high enough to reach the American definition of space. Didn't um, Neil Armstrong go to space the first time in an X-15, technically? Da Vinci 10, that is the most dad joke of Sunday morning newspapers ever. Bamboo is really sick. Yeah, it's, it's a color mixing thing. I, I really don't know what it is. Like bamboo is positioning to take over a good chunk of the market, which, you know, good for them, whatever. Um, they have some business practices I don't agree with, but the machines themselves, I mean, like I use mine. If I really didn't like bamboo, I wouldn't use it. I just, you know, I just critique the heck out of them because they're in a position where they could be doing more better in my opinion, but they're not because of this decisions on their end. So I give them shit for it, but hey, I give shit to every company that I can. It's fun to call out companies. The joys of being an independent YouTuber that doesn't get sponsored too often. 
Uh, do you ever think some purists out there ever use the phrase, those morons are Voron? Probably. I mean, auto, Voron autocorrects the, the moron a lot on most uh, phones, so it happens quite often, actually. No, did Bamboo ever admit? Yeah, they, they do their usual, oh, we're sorry, and we'll fix it. it they, they, they really don't care. Remember, the vast, remember, you need to remember, the vast majority of people involved in 3D printing are not part of the Twitter community or the Discord community, right? So if, you know, the vast majority of people don't care about the drama, okay? They just look at the price point and what the machine can do. It's cheap and it's fast and it does a bunch of stuff. I'm buying it. Oh, there's this whole thing about licensing issue and potential, you know, security. Yeah, most people don't give a shit about that. Most people don't give a shit about open source. Most people don't give a shit about, you know, software. Oh, I, they got no problem signing up for cloud services left and right. Nobody ever reads the EULAs. The, the, the vast majority of the audience doesn't care as much as we do because they don't. They, they buy the thing to do the thing and it does the thing. What do they care? So, you know, you might see a big, you know, amount of Twitter drama that doesn't actually translate to anything in real life. Five machines that build yourself last longer. And if something goes wrong, you know what you're doing to fix it. Like I've, I've got the issue with the bamboo where the bed sensor is on the fritz. So either I, um, cause that's not in warranty. They, that machine's over a year old. Um, it's not in warranty anymore. And if they send me something to fix it, it's because I'm an influencer, which <laughs> funny, I found out they, um, I'm not gonna say who or what or where or why, um, they treat uh, influencers differently than the common Joe public when it comes to uh, tickets, just so you know. Um, but anyways, um, so to fix it, I have to take the back panel off and fiddle with it. I can't just buy a new bed sensor off the market because they use three custom proprietary bed sensors that are part of the bed. You, you can't just, you know, buy the PCB and swap it. Everything is fully custom on this machine. So if something happens outside of warranty, you have to pay out of pocket for their part and hope they still have it. So in five years from now, when that machine's EOL'd and they don't make it anymore, you better hope they still have an inventory of parts. They're making an appliance. Yeah, they are. They are. They're, the, the thing is that there is room in the 3D printing market. The 3D printing market has now matured to that point. Um, where there is room in the 3D printing market for that kind of thing, where there is room for a Mac, okay? There is room for a, a toaster in the 3D printing market. It's been the hobby market for a while. And then um, DJI, I'm sorry, Bamboo Lab, um, saw that, hey, this is a market that is kind of like the FPV market where there are a few companies that are kind of big, but it's still very fractured. It's got its roots in open source and it's, it's, it's asking for its Apple. And hey, we could be that Apple. And they moved in kind of like how DJI did in the FPV market. Um, it is what it is. It's business. Hey, capitalism. Um, Look at Anchor. Their machines are, compl again, completely different. They they require cloud services. Their parts are all proprietary. Now, I, I give props for Anchor. I think their machine, the M5, which I have been printing on. I've actually, um, I, I shared some, I tweeted about it. Did I tweet about it? Yeah. I've been printing with the M5. Um, it prints pretty damn good. Um, I printed a little castle thingy. To the dragon. It's, it's wispy. I really don't care about wisps like this in prints because that's slicer setting slash filament. This has nothing to do with the print quality or the printer machine itself. Um, it prints pretty good and I think it's more serviceable than a bamboo, um, but it's unenclosed and you need cloud services to use the machine fully. Whereas at least the bamboo runs in LAN only mode. The, as far as I'm aware, you lose a good chunk of the functionality of an M5C without, without internet. You can pretty much just hit print. Surprise, Apple has not made iPrint. I can't say anything about Apple and printing. Um, the big eared cat look good. It did. The M5 actually prints really good. I'm legitly surprised, but here's the thing. You ready? We're going to bring it in here. Building a printer that prints good is nothing special because we all use the exact same shit. 
and everything like slicers are solved. It's kind of like salt. Like you know how in some video games with computers are solved games, like some games like chess is a solved game. Certain games are solved. The, the DNA to build a good printer has been solved. It's not hard to build a good printer. What's hard is to build a reliable long-term machine that has very good quality of life and is sold at a price point that's attractive without you know, scraping user data, without requiring proprietary software and components. And building a, a, a that rook right here prints as good as the bamboo. Like I can print a benchy off that rook that'll look as good as a benchy off the bamboo, that'll look as good as a benchy off of any of my Vorons that'll look as good as it, well, okay, not the Tico. But like, if you take the time to, to think it out and plan it out, you can build a printer that prints as good as any other printer. Building a good printer is not hard because you need to move X, Y, and Z. Okay, there's a few different motion platforms out there. You can, you can do Bed Slinger, you can do Quarks Y, you can do Delta. There, there are plenty of motion systems out there, but they all use NEMA 17s. They all use GT2 Belt with idlers and bearings, and they all run on rails, rods, or V-wheels. V it, it's Lego. You can pick and choose the different components, but they've all been done already before. There's nothing special about using them in any different thing. It's all been done before. Um, you can do a control board that's 32-bit. Well, the majority of them are 32-bit now. You can put quiet drivers on the machines, which everyone else has figured out except for Bamboo, which apparently they just figured out, so we're gonna praise them for it. Um, although they're doing something different with H-bridges, but what to do? Quiet printing has been a thing. You're, the motion of the machine itself and the fans are going to be the loudest point, loudest thing on a high-speed machine nowadays, anyways. Um, so what? What else? What else is there to solve with 3D printing? We've got curtain air cooling. That's the new hot thing. You, you enclose a Core XY machine. You do curtain air cooling. Vez was doing that on VZBots a year before Bamboo did it. Now Bamboo did it, now all commercial machines are doing it. But like, again, the open source people were leading the way and they just copy paste because that's, you know, how you innovate. How long before we get beltless linear stepper motor rails? Eh, it's like bed printer, like belt printers are finicky AF. I know Pooch is still trying to find the holy grail of a belt that works on his. Servos are, are non-starter. Servos will never be a thing in at-home 3D printing. They cost too much for the, the risk versus reward. It's not worth it. 3D printing is a solved thing. 3D printing is a solved thing. At-home 3D printing, unless it, we're literally held back by material. You can only melt and re-solidify plastic so fast before you lose quality. And look at speed benchies. Nobody can pull off a sub 10 minute speed benchy that looks as good as a 30 minute benchy. Nobody can. You can't pull off a, a sub 10 minute speed benchy that looks as good as a 30 minute benchy. Because 30 minute benchies are refined. Anything below 30 is, is just internet points in my opinion. So we're, we're actually getting to the point where we're limited by material science. You can only melt and re-solidify plastic so fast without losing layer adhesion because that's a big problem with the bamboos. Whenever I print uh, these parts right here, these ones were on, these were on the bamboo. These ones were on the boron. Anytime like I'm printing parts like this on a bamboo where they're like tall and kind of skinny, I print them at 50% speed because if I print it at 100% speed, they're weak. When's the next innovation? In my opinion, it all comes down to quality of life, how easy the machine is to use, service, repair, and just like quality of life is the big thing. Um, TAP, like when it comes to open source, right? I'm a big fan of the open source designs. TAP was a huge thing because with TAP or nozzle probes, your bed, like first layer is out of the equation. Once you figure out your offset, you're done. So you can swap out bed surfaces, you can change stuff. You never have to worry about drifting Z because it's, 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 it's consistent. It's the nozzle touching the bed is your zero, Z zero. Um, so things like that, um, there, there is, it, it's just making the ecosystem easier to get into. So like, I'm not a huge fan of it, but like what Anchor does with the M5 
and their whole like their software where you can pull up the you got your phone connected to the printer and you can browse a bunch of 3d models and i could just hit print and it prints and it's done now the problem is you get people that are into 3d printing that join 3d printing that only get involved with 3d printing through that method and they're used to the walled garden it's kind of like how aol in the early internet where you had people that only used went on the internet for aol and aol services because they didn't realize there was a greater community that failed um you have bamboo trying to spin up their version of creality cloud where it's you know it's the exact same thing where you you, you buy your bamboo machine you, you connect it to your your your, your home wi-fi network of course you know let them in um and then you got your app on their phone you got your, your their app on your phone and you're like i want to print something and you just click and it prints you don't have to slice it you don't have to do anything you know you know slicing isn't hard you buy a prusa all the default slicer profiles are there you just load bottle slice as long as buddy you know orientated the model properly so you don't have to flip it or anything you're good to go i said once you set the anchor up through wi-fi you can use it thereafter with bluetooth only um as far as i'm aware you can use it with bluetooth the problem is the range on the bluetooth is absolutely shite like you have to hold your phone next like literally next to the printer um and you can't upload models to it. You, you basically can only like plug in a, uh, a model via USB stick and you can hit print. And that's pretty much all you can do. And like monitor the print and stop it. non-planner okay are you ready non-planner printing uh full what is it full control xyz or full motion xyz or whatever it's called that's cool it's pointless it's a trade show demo okay it looks really cool don't get me wrong but the problem is this i import my model there is no slicer on the market that does non-planar printing. You cannot tell a slicer, hey, here's my nozzle size, here's my bed size, here's my here's my bed max temperature. You tell that stuff to your slicer and okay, it's a delta or whatever, you know, bed is, you know, this is zero and whatever. Hey, my tool head can rotate um, 36 degrees um, along this axis and it can rotate or it, it can pivot 36 degrees and it can rotate 259 degrees um, Please slice the model for the optimal printing geometry And nobody has a slicer like that though. They're, they're demos. They're not practical Like until a slicer actually has that and I haven't seen any work on that even on I did a video at Rocky Mountain um or what oh, I can't remember his name. He had the, uh, the the pimped out modded V0 that that could do you know XYZ and AB or was it XYZ a, XYZ and AB motion. So it could it could spin the bed and it could pivot the bed. The G code that it ran on it printed like a pillar and then it printed like a three sided pillar and then it printed a benchy on each side of that pillar. That was all custom G code, all custom G code. He basically had to slice it all and copy and paste slice G code together non-planar printing is just demo stuff you can't import a model and slice it non planar you have to like create a demo g code manually by hand by batching stuff together or you know using something like full control to create a demo g code but you're you're not importing something as simple as you know a bracket and and doing it in full control or or doing it with non-planar like that's the problem with that stuff it's it looks really cool to demo it but it's not feasible at the home level in any way right now because we are sorely lacking in the software side of it uh if Prusa could do a prusa l that's say 250 and basically smaller um space elf i've been bugging joe about selling the x is xi i think was what they call it the the basically if you look at the um the Prusa AFS, the automated farm system, selling the individual AFS unit as its own thing and just like modify the frame so it could stand alone. I've been trying to get Joe to do that, 
I'm like, Joe, do it. Don't worry about the malt. Just make it a, 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 basically a, a Core XY machine that's between the Mark IV and the XL. You hear a super? I did hear about that. I'm excited. I like Super Slicer. I um, hope he does good things. Affordable 3D metal printers, never happening. Um, metal dust, if, it, if it's doing any sort of uh, sintering with fine metal powder, that shit is cancerous AF. If you thought resin printing was bad for you, uh, fine metal powder is, um, yeah, black lung and asbestos level. Um, so that ain't happening. And then also, you know, stuff that can melt metal. Most people aren't, you know, y'all are scared about printers in your house where you're putting like fire suppression systems over your, your, your shitty ender clone let alone, you know, putting something in your house that gets hot enough to melt metal that actually does melt metal purposely. <laughs> so yeah, at home metal printing outside of like extreme fringe case hobby level theft isn't going to happen. I've got the, the 3D printed metal where you like you 3D print the thing, you know, it's the, it's this, the high metal count of filament where you print it on your normal printer with a, a a hardened nozzle and then you center it after that's probably as close as you're gonna get you ever get enough power in a standard 50 for laser centering metal yeah you could and get a mig well exactly you ready go to the harbor fraught go buy a shitty cheap mig gun then go on ebay and buy a kuka arm and bolt the two together Literally, that anytime I see like, oh, we 3D printed this rocket engine, and then you watch the video, and it's just a MIG gun strapped to a KUKA arm going Pfft. Literally, KUKA arm, MIG gun, 3D metal printing. It's like 3D printing house. Okay, so we got those um, things that people use to pour foundations, and all we did was put it on a CNC controller. Saw a titanium fire metal. Yeah, you need argon if you're welding. Well, you should have argon. You need that inert atmosphere. And receive aluminum melting. You realize you don't want that in the house. So story time. Um, when I was a weed lad, um, my dad used to work at a foundry. I won't say which auto manufacturer, um, but they had a pit where a ladle would come down and scoop out molten aluminum. Um, if you're a little squick, you may want to mute it for a little bit. Um, where later we'll come down, pour out the amount of aluminum, pour it into the engine blocks, the engine block bolts, the sand and engine block bolts. Um, one day, one of the operators tried to clear something quicker than the ladle poured, and he got liquid aluminum poured on him. Now, the fun thing is, stuff like liquid metal, uh, steel, and lead and whatnot runs off you. It burns the shit out of you. Runs off. Liquid aluminum don't. You got home early that day. So yeah, liquid metal is not fun. I've, I've given myself, um, I believe third degree burns. I've untreated third degree burns, um, just working at a tool shop with like grinders and you know, whatnot. Um, it, it, hot metal is not something you mess around with. Hot metal is not something you mess around with. You're saying current FDM printer? They are, well, they're not, they're glorified robotic hot glue guns that splooge molten plastic. There's a difference. See the weather test of time. The big issue I have with concrete, concrete you wanna pour it as once. So if you're building it up on layers, you're gonna have, well, you're literally gonna have layer adhesion issues. Um, I believe they have some dude walking around putting rebar in it as they go. The finish looks like shit. And the thing is though, it's still quicker to have a bunch of dudes just framing it out of wood. And it's quicker and it's easier to mod. And like, it's easier to run wire and electrical in and heating and HVAC and all that. Like every time I see a, 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 a 3D printed house, it's like usually in a place in the South where like the climate's pretty like stable and they're usually like one floor and they're pretty small. And if you, if you wanna do like that kind of thing, it's called an I, um, ICF house, insulated concrete forms. They were a thing when I was in college back in the early 2000s. You, it's styrofoam. You build your house out of styrofoam. It's like Lego. You literally have some guys go around and build the house out of styrofoam brick. And then you get the concrete boom truck to just fill the whole thing with concrete. And you're done. You get a, you get a concrete house that's also insulated. 
and it's a lot and you don't need any specialized equipment because the problem with all these 3d printed house you need to set up that special gantry thing to to print the house whereas this is just a bunch of guys set up a bunch of forms and they just come in with generic concrete boom thing and fill the thing with concrete and you're done no special equipment at all And because it's a single pour, it's gonna be stronger. And if you wanna run electrically, you just get that hot wire and you cut like trenches in the in the foam on the inside to run your wire through. And then you just put, uh, put your drywall one on it. Yeah, ICF blocks for foundation and sit panels, roof, entire house ready. Yeah, that's the thing. Like 3D printed concrete houses are like every time they come up, like think about it, every time they come up, it's always a demo. When have they ever come up where it's like, yeah, we're in production, we're actively building communities. It's like, no, it's always a startup company. You never hear the same company twice. It, it's, it's a trade show demo to get investors every time. But the thing is, you know, the days of getting free VC and, and low interest rates are gone. So I got a feeling you're gonna see a lot of these kind of peter out. ICF doesn't get the clicks, it gets the sales though because people are actively and continuously using ICF for houses. Or you, you live where I live, where it's just, you know, a bunch of guys just throwing up, like, they, they just built um, an addition to the subdivision I live in by my, my guy's school. So every day I would walk them to school and I'd see, you know, on one day, this house is literally just Monday, it's just the foundations poured. Okay, it's set. And the guys are putting the first floor on, like the foundation, like the, the first floor on. And then I'm dropping them off at school the next day and on Tuesday, and they've already got all the walls up. And then I'm coming by on Wednesday and they're putting the second story on. And then I come by and then Friday rolls around and they're, they're, they got the crane putting the roofs on. Like they're putting the, uh, the, the, the roof joists on. It's like, and then you come back the next Monday and they've already got plywood on the roof. It's like, yeah. And then they're, the, because it's this different group each time, it's just, you know, the house next to it is one step ahead and the house behind it is one step behind. And they just go down the line like a machine. Uh, SpaceX are having concrete printed out at Boca Chica at the moment. It's not gimmicky. What, what are they printing in concrete? They, everything, they're using that fancy concrete. The, what are they printing though? Printing mold. Oh yeah, molds for poured concrete kind of makes sense. But that's that's ICF. You're, you're, you're literally just using a styrofoam. You just stack them together or you just make a, a single homogenous thing. I right, see there's a subdivision in Arizona that's 3D printed. Each house takes one day. Let's let's see if we can find this. Arizona 3D printed subdivision. Okay. How's my manager going to have a mix between concrete, foam, insulation, and steel? Okay, so it's... The walls are 3D printed. The roof is traditionally built. Three hundred thousand. Okay, so what is the house? So that's that's the house. That don't look 3D printed. That is really smooth, unless they stuccoed it after. But how long does it take to make? Fourteen hundred square feet to nineteen hundred. So, for for reference, my house is eleven hundred square feet. It's it's a raised branch, so it's eleven hundred square feet for a top floor and a bottom floor. But where does it say? See these homes, I don't like. These ones, I don't like because you got you got these the the lines. It's annoying. Less than six weeks for their, all the houses. You gotta remember, those houses are really simple too. Like here where I live, you, you, you need to go four feet down. Um, you gotta get below the frost line. You need to have our Ontario building code. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So 
So you need uh, R30 to R35. R value concrete wall. A concrete wall, every inch of thickness is a R value of 0.1 to 0.2. So if I were to pour, uh, if I were to build my house out of concrete and it with a six inch wall, it'd be R1, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and I need R30 in my walls because I live in Ontario where, you know, the winters can get cold. Also, I need to be four feet down to get below the frost line. And I need to be able to have R50 in the ceiling, minimum. I have R70 in my ceiling. Remember, 3D printed concrete houses, there is no aggregate in the mix to prevent blockages, so your house is effectively plaster. Oh, okay, they had a bunch of, okay, so I used to live in a subdivision, not our house, but they built a bunch of like really cheap like Remax homes in our subdivision years ago. This is like 90s. They had a bunch of houses got broken into during the summer. I shit you not. The houses were just two by four stud walls. They put the pink insulation, they put really sh like really thin plywood and then they put the um, vinyl panels. They had a rash of break-ins where people would go on vacation, they'd come home, all their stuff was stolen. People pulled back the insulation, pulled off the plywood, punched through the pink like rigid foam insulation below that, and then punched through the drywall and got into their houses, like literally broke through the walls. Yeah. Apparently they could do it by hand. That's how like shitty quality the building materials. They, they would literally just run up on a house with like hammers, peel back the insulation, rip off the, the, the plywood, punch through the pink insulation, pull up the, 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 the foam insulation, like the, the, the bat insulation, then punch through the drywall and they'd be in the house. I was like, that's nuts. Matt, you, that's your house. That's the building quality of your house. <laughs> Yeah, when they smash through, they gotta scream, oh yeah, of course. The window would be much easier. The thing is, security systems, they did it, they bypassed all the security systems. Because people had security, like the problem is like some, this, you know, people would have security systems on their lower windows. This bypassed them all, because he just punched into the wall. And it was easier, apparently it was easier, made less noise. Because they did like a bunch of houses in a row. It was nuts. Like it happened one summer, like I like I was in, it was like late 90s and like, it happened in not, it happened in our subdivision, but like in the new section. So it was kind of like, everyone was like freaked out. No motion, so I guess not. Or they, they like broke into like the lower floor or something like they, cause that was why they, they skipped the entrance in like the common entry areas. Cause most people have like the motion sensor in the hallway. So if you just break right into the bedroom, like you break right into the master bedroom. There's no motion sensor in the master bedroom. Would it be considered an inside job? <laughs> yeah, so what's a, a common style of house around here is called a raised branch. Um, so let me pull up pictures here. So I live in Southern Ontario, okay? So because I'm Southern Ontario, I live south of Detroit, put it that way. Um, this is an example of it, but it's not like the common design where basically your house is only like four feet in the ground. So we don't have this, right? Like the, our garage isn't below grade, but imagine like you walk into your house, you have a little landing and then you have like a little split where you have like four stairs up, four stairs down because you have to go down four feet to get to below the frost line, to pour your actual footing for the foundation of the house, right? It's gotta be below. The so you only dig down four feet, you pour your footing, you build up eight feet, there's your first floor or your basement, and then you put your, your main floor on top. And then you have like a little landing when you come in at, at actual grade level. So when you guys are watching me stream in the basement, I'm ground levels here. So from here down is actually underground. So if you, if you look in the back when I'm in the basement, uh, the window that's blocked, the window about six inches below the window is dirt. So I'm in the ground, but I'm not like in the ground. Like my basement isn't like 
below like basements, basement. So that's a common type of house in my area is raised ranch. Um, so that's what we have a lot around here because it's, you only have to go four feet below to get below the frost line. So if you go further north, they don't become as common because you have to go deeper to get below the frost line. And then if you go further south in the States, a lot of houses in the States, I found out, I didn't know this. Every house around here has a basement. Even if it's a full basement, every house has a basement. Whereas you go down to like Arizona or whatnot, they don't. Puppy. Hey, get over here. Go. 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 It's fine. All good? Hey, come try this. No, uh, you could be on it. I don't care. That's good. That's good. I would like it better on Coke. Really? Really. I, I think it's good enough by itself. But yeah, this with Coke would probably, it's already got cane sugar in it. So, so it'd be really sugary with Coke. Coke zero. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing, puppy? Sniffing. He's sniffing. Yeah, that was like, I, I've been on, um, I went on a, like the shop I used to work at had a plant down in Alabama and that was really weird. Like nobody had basements. Every, every house was like slab on grade. And I'm like, y'all don't have basements? Have we arrived at the end? You have. When the lights are off, it's near or after dark. This is where we shoot the shit for a bit. Around here we call it. We have tri-levels too. So um, it, they don't build them anymore. Um, but a lot of houses in this area that were built in like the 80s, 70s and 80s, I want to say, were tri-level where you would walk into the house and you would have a main floor iron grade and usually it was like a, um, a living room and the kitchen. And then you would turn to the right, like you would come into the house, you'd have living room and kitchen here. And then if you like went in a little bit and turned to the right, you would have stairs that went up and down and like upstairs was like the living or the bedrooms and downstairs was the basement. So they kind of got rid of the tri-level by just making it two full levels and just having a little landing. So you walk in, so instead of the houses being lengthwise like this, where you, like you walked in, there was a rectangle like this, the, the rectangles now go deep into the lot. So you walk into the house in the front, get a little landing, goes up and down. Upstairs, you got the, the living room, kitchen, bedrooms, and the basement. My house is a 1952 brick ranch with full poured basement. My neighbor is cinder block. Oh, ooh, cinder. Yeah, we don't do cinder blocks around here. Everything's around here is poured. It would be worse than southwestern Connecticut. Granite is not. Yeah. So up here, pretty much every house has a basement. At least where I live, I'm Southern Ontario. I know once you go too far north, you get into the Canadian Shield, and that's its own can of, can of worms. Um, but around here, pretty much every house has a basement. Again, remember, I live south of Detroit, so. Being a basement, but yeah, Arizona. Why do you people live in Arizona? It is way too hot. Why? Why? Basements are where the HVAC system lives. Eh, yeah, true. Like, I got my furnace in the basement with the blower, but, like, my actual AC unit is outside, like, on the other side of this wall. It was built in the 1880s or 1890s. Oh, God. I was an insurance broker for three years before I got into the trade, and those houses scare me. We have great winters. Yeah, but you also, like, die in the summer. At least you're not in Texas where your power grid just constantly fails. You got that going for you, which is nice. 
Arizona winters, Canyon summer. So you get like mid thirties with like 90% humidity. So that's my summer. <laughs> I mean, it, it, we, we, we streamed in here where it was like 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Northern Illinois, my, oh, okay, yeah, you got the same temperature as me, Swamper. Family in Louisiana, everyone there has their homes on cement slabs, no basement, it's all swamp land. Yeah. Plus everything gets like blown away by a hurricane every like 10, 15 years. Yeah, hey, uh, how quick would you print ASN and enter with Spray Pro? I have no idea, Durang. Um, print it as fast as it goes. 30, 60, 90. If, the, if, that, if 30, 60, 90 works, bump it up. Go 60, 90, 120. That's kind of my go-to with 30 millimeter increments. Um, so 30 millimeters outer wall, 60 millimeters inner wall, 90 millimeters second infill. If the printer can do that, bump it everything up 30. And if it can do that, bumping everything up 30. And if it can't do that, then there you go. We're outside breaker panels and there's only, yo, oh yeah, there's some weird like building codes in some places. Like here in Ontario, like my breaker box is behind that in the garage. And I got a hundred amp service and like 20 something breakers on it. Forty-five to forty-seven in the summer. F that, Diego. F that. I have never seen a basement in my life in Australia. Yeah, it, it's weird. Like houses that are slab on crates. Like, what do you do without your basement? Like, that's where you put your things. Like, you have your main floor where you like live and do stuff. And then your basements were like, you got your laundry room, you got your utility room, you got your family room. So here, in, in, at least in my area, it's common like, you, you, have your, you, have your, you have your living room. So your living room, it might have a TV, it might not, it might have a fancy couch, it might not. But like when people come over, they hang out in the living room. So your living room is like the, the, the room next to the kitchen that's not the bedrooms. Um, and it's like, but then you also, in the basement, you have the family room, which is like the living room, but where it's where your family hangs out. So you got like your sound, your TV with the sound system and like the kids' toys and like, it, it's weird. We have like two versions of the same room, but like one's like for guests when people visit and one's not, it's weird, but yeah. isn't the basement see up where i live attics aren't a thing because attics are cold as shit because all our houses are vented like the attics are vented so if you go in the attic it's either as cold as it is outside or hotter than it is outside we don't have like attics where like you store stuff that's not a thing here Race cars and bikes go in the garage. Or 3D printer people. I'm in my garage right now. My lawnmower is on the other side of this rack, which really sucks. I'm, I'm starting to realize I need to get a shed to put my lawnmower in because there's been a few days now where I've cut the, the grass before a stream. And then I come in here and the, the lawnmower with all covered in freshly cut grass. And, and like, it's had, a, it's had the day to like cook in the hot garage. And then I come out here to stream at the end of the day and it stinks out here. So yeah, I need to I need to get a shed to put the lawnmower in. <laughs> this this ain't this works like winter's coming. We're in September now. Winter's coming. It's gonna be much better out here. Um, but yeah, having a, a yeah, that that's getting to me. What happened with the Warren Design separate? Did we ever open it back up? I don't know if we did. I have nothing to do with like I, I, I'm an admin on it. I should probably pay attention more to that. Uh, we closed it down during the whole, um, it's back up. Yeah, the, or for, oh, oh, it's still private. Oh, I don't know. 
Join the forum or the Discord. The, the subreddit was turning into cancer anyways. Um, yeah, we, we, yeah, serials are up. We took the other one offline um, during the whole Reddit blackout thing and our community was not big enough to get the actual Reddit admins to actually like yell at us. So we just left it offline because let's be honest, most Reddit communities are toxic as shit. Um, if you wanna be part of the Voron community, join the Discord or join the actual forum that we have, the actual legit real forum, um, if, if you actually wanna be active in the community. Garage shops are the best. It, it's funny. You ready? I, okay, We're, I really love getting the bamboo fanboys riled up. I moved that machine out here because I, most of the machines out here are for show. The machines I actually use are downstairs, okay? So the, the Vorons I actually use in the, in the Prusas, they are downstairs in the print room. I, I use those machines. I moved the bamboo out here because it's loud as shit and I wanted to get it out of the house. The problem I have now, I can literally, I, I get home from doing errands. I park my car in the driveway. I get out of my car. My garage door is closed. I am standing in my driveway and I fucking hear this machine. Through through the, the tarp that's hanging behind this, through the garage door, through the ambient noise of the outside of the planet Earth in a, in a, in a subdivision, through, I don't know how far back I parked my car, I fucking hear this machine. I hear this thing if I'm in the kitchen and it's in my garage. This is the loudest printer I own and I own a Voron 1 with DRVs that moves us fast. <laughs> But that's okay. They're coming out with a machine that's quiet, so you should buy it. You know, you know, they could have done it with this machine from the start. But instead they just, you know, use the H bridge design that, you know, DJI uses because it's fucking DJI anyways. Same people. Anyways. Only seen old houses in Texas with basements. 1902 Greek revival in Austin with two basements. Two basements? Damn, son. Need an enclosure. I figured my garage would be enough. P1P doesn't make me call that noise. It, it resonates. This machine resonates. I don't, the, the P1P is actually a little quieter. The thing is, I haven't turned my P1P on in like before summer. I know whenever you last saw the P1P in the background in the basement streams is the last time I used the P1P. It's been collecting dust in, this, in the, the, the room of misfit printers. I haven't found a use for it. I haven't needed the P1P. They won't use TMCs because you got to license TMCs. Bamboo is all about fully in-house proprietary. I mean, everyone else figured out how to build quiet machines years ago, but Bamboo apparently didn't. But now they have. So that's a, that's a, that's a win for them. They figured out what everyone else figured out, you know, years ago. P1S quieter. It's the same machine. The P1 at the P1P, the X1C, and the P1S are the exact same machine. The only difference is the tool head controller board um, for the tool head. The the actual X Y Z motion system on both machines are exactly the same. On all three machines are exactly the machine same. The only difference is the X1C. They put more shit on it, and they have a different tool head board for some reason. But and no lidar. But the, the actual XYZ motion system, as far as I'm, I'm aware, and judging the, the P1P is, the P1S is the P1P with the options that you could get for the P1P, 
added, and then they also found a box of panels in the background, and they put it on, and they called it the P1S. They won't come out with a bed flinger. I don't think they're gonna come out with a bed flinger. There's nothing wrong with the bed flinger motion system as an open air printer. Like you can build a good bed flinger. There's nothing wrong with a good bed flinger. The problem is the vast majority of bed flingers are budget. So it's kind of like, you know, not all X are Y, but all Y are X type thing. Would you recommend enclosed Prusa or P1S? It depends. Prusas are, in my opinion, pricey for what you get, but you do get more in certain areas. They are fully open source. They're, you can air gap them. If you're in any sort of situation with business or education where you have to worry about network security, they automatically win. Um, if you need to worry about long-term support of the machine, they win. Um, if you need to worry about user serviceability, they win. Um, if you're, if you're a little Timmy in your basement and you only want one machine and you're just going to print the odd random meme print of the month you find on Reddit, a bamboo machine probably makes more sense. If you're coming to me saying, Hey, I run a school where we need five printers for students to print stuff they design on, um, several times per year, per semester, rotating students, these machines are going to be beat on. Cool. Get a Prusa. Like. It, it it really depends on your, your what kind of machine you're looking for and who you are. Anyone who tells you the bamboo is the best machine you should only ever buy a bamboo is an idiot. Anyone who tells you a Prusa is the best machine you should buy and it's the only machine you buy is an idiot, okay? There is no best machine for everyone. There are machines that are good for some people in certain cases and machines that are good for some people in other cases. You have to look at what the person needs what their requirements are, what their budget is, what their use case is, what their long-term plans in, what their environment is, what their ecosystem they're operating is, is in, and then kind of provide some educated guesses on what would be the best use case for them and what machine would be the best use for them, okay? It, it, it's not black and white, okay? But it's the internet. So like if I put out a, a tweet where I'm like, hey, congratulations, you know, Bamboo for figuring out TMCs and building a quiet printer. And then I get a million people that go, why do you only shit on Bamboo? It's like, do you even watch my live streams where I shit on other companies and I call out people? I've called out Prusa, you know, they should not have advertised freaking the Mark IV as having input shaper until it actually had input shaper. I think the machines are slightly, they are overpriced for what you get. Um, and they should have for that price point, they should have some features they don't have. You know, I've called out pretty much every company there is in certain regards, but you know, I make one little tweet about bamboo and they all get their panties in a bunch. So it is what it is. Can't, 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 they got their, some, they, they sold their soul to that company. They, they have to defend it. Cause you know, when you agree to the bamboo EULA, it's, you have to defend us on every social media or else. I've never dealt with a more annoying printer community than the bamboo fanboys. And the funny thing is, I use your machine. Your machine is good in certain scenarios. I just wish it was better. Me wanting your machine to be better is not a bad thing. But worst, worst community I've ever had to deal with is the bamboos. Bamboo, and, and they don't they don't moderate it to, to any where they near where they need to. We're still the Ender fan. The thing is with the Ender fans, they kind of know that their machine is kind of shit. They're like, yeah, it's shit, but it does what I need it to do. And they're like, okay. It's already the best. It's not the best. If it was the best, it would work and not be crazy loud. Tom didn't like the Clipper. Yeah, I don't blame them. They were giving them shit. They were stupid. I mean, I, you guys, I ban people from my chat not all the time, but anytime somebody starts getting yuppity, I ban them. There, there are certain printer, like, for the, you know, for how much shit I've gotten from certain bam, like, I, you know what's fun is when I join, like, the pop in the bamboo discord and I search my name. Then it gets fun. Um, or the bamboo Facebook group and search my name. Then it gets fun. Um, but, like, you know, 
I don't have to deal with that. I could, I can, you know, just outright say I'm never dealing with bamboo again, like how Tom did. But you know, that that's what Tom did, and you know, I'm not Tom. So, like, it's super weird getting the toxicity that you see in like the console, like the gaming console fanboys creep into 3D printing. It's like, I just want to make plastic boat. If your company, and the thing is, you're you're in the headlights now. You're now you're now gunning for the number one type of 3D printer. Of course you're gonna get called out more than the others because you're gunning for number one spot. You because you open yourself to more critiquing, you're gonna get more critiquing. It's how it works. You don't go, oh, uh, they're they're gunning for number one. They're they're doing all these moves to become number one in the ecosystem. I should shut up about it. It's like no, you get critiqued harder. It's how it works. Can't be as bad as Grant. Grant got a lemon of a machine. I, I can't, I, I, the thing is I've talked with Grant off the record, so I don't know what, I, I, I can't say certain things pop like, put it that way. But he, he's, get, he's getting fucked over, like his machine is fucked. And and their, their quality of customer support is shit. Until they found out, oh wait, he's an influencer. Closed source source. Open source gets critics too. I break all printers equally. I'm an equal opportunity destroyer. Six owned, one alive for now. There you go. I mean, like, I keep saying how broken this Voron is. A a anytime this Voron comes up, yeah, it's broken. I need to fix it. I'm going to replace it with a VZ bot. I mean, if I was saying that about the bamboo, the bamboo folks would be on a hubbub. I haven't had a single Voron person call me out for saying this, this, this trident is, is shit and broken and I'm I'm retiring it because I don't want to bother fixing it. And, and you know, nobody nobody bats an eye to that. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Um, the bed is not heating properly. Um, the extruder itself, the feed gears are stripped, like the, the set screws for the extruder are stripped. And the fans have, all the fans have died on it. I've had to replace all the fans. And I think I have a broken wire somewhere. Uh, TLDR, that thing drifts first layer like a mofo as well. Um, which is really weird because that shouldn't be happening anymore. We've solved all those issues, but it still drifts first layers like a motherfucker. Um, it's, it still has a print on it with a drifted first layer. Um, yeah, I tried print. The last thing I tried to print on it was the, uh, parts for the, the, one of the Nerf guns and it started under extruding and drifting layers. And I, I'm like, screw it. I'm done. I'm done filling with it. So yeah, nobody bats an eye when I when I, I talk shit about that machine. But it, oh, that machine's loud, and you know I get I get Facebook group threads about it. Time for an extra sketch. That's what the Tico's for. Easy to try it. I might, I might now. Actually, I I might now. So the plan was I wanted to leave that alone because it's got a 350 by 350 bed. It's the biggest it's the biggest XY volume I have. So I kind of wanted to leave it alone, but now that the VZ bot is, is getting to that point, um, it's 330 by 330 by 400. I might do Tridex on that. That might end up being a Tridex printer. I might mod that into a Tridex. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah. Any interest in print NC? Uh, print CNC, the, the CNC machine? Not really. There's a few CNC machines I'm kind of eyeing. I would love to get a CNC machine over here because I've got room. Um, if anyone from Onefinity is listening. Um, the problem is those large kind of CNC machines are not my thing. Um, I'm waiting on uh, the, I don't know if it's been announced, but the uh, LDO Motors Millennium Mill machine kit. Our bamboos are great for per nerf blasters. Um, this, this one, this one. I believe this one was all on the bamboo. Yeah, this one was all on the bamboo. I think this one, yeah, this one was a mixture of bam, or I'm trying to remember. This one is a mixture of bamboo and boron.
I have a one finny swappy of Vorons. Um, logistically, that would be kind of a problem. Printed 20 or so, there you go. A Russian ship broke down near Madagascar, really? Well, it, it's Russian logistics, what do you expect? Way too much work for, I, I, I was kind of interested. So I, it's like MPCNC. It's like, I don't, if I wanted a CNC machine, I, I would want a CNC machine to be able to machine like this kind of thing. The biggest thing I would want to machine is like quadcopter frames. Like I'd rather a machine that can machine like small aluminum components, like maybe six by six by six inches, maybe a little bit bigger and like carbon fiber. I wouldn't want something that's like 24 inches by 24 inches that does plywood. That's, that's not my thing. Okay, it's 12.08, I think we're gonna call it. I think we're gonna call it. Yeah, I think we're gonna call it. Do you know what actually really annoys the hell of me right now? This, this. SpaceX is only streaming their launches on, on Twitter. This is the stupidest, like, old Muskie has done a lot of stupid brain dead things but they made the decision to only stream their, their launches now on Twitter. And it is like, it, it, it's, you know, I don't use the word often, but it's pants on a head retarded. Like it annoys the living daylights out of me. Like he needs to go bye-bye. He needs to go bye-bye. Like he's a stupid, stupid, stupid. So instead of being able to watch it on YouTube at 4K, good bit rate i gotta watch it on like shitty twitter at crap bit rate surrounded by bots and i can't even watch it on my tv which that that the part that annoys me is i watch these whenever there's a, uh, a launch during the day in the little guy's home we watch the launch on the tv because you know youtube has a tv app so you know little guy likes space he loves walking watching rocket launches so we watch the launch yeah we can't do that anymore you gotta watch the 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 nsf stream I uh, stop. It's still Twitter. I don't care what anyone says. You ready? You ready? Hey, what's that say? Yeah, it's Twitter. The only people that call it X are people with blue check marks. Simple as that. It's proved that being a leader or owner does not mean as smart as. No, he, hooray for Gwen. For those that know, hooray for Gwen Shotwell. You know, props to, to Gwen Shotwell. Okay. Because, you know, Elon's a shitty owner, but at least, you know, Gwen's actually running SpaceX. Every now and then Elon does something stupid because he's the owner, but at least Gwen is running it and she knows what she's doing. So hooray for Gwen. Oh, it's horrible. Twitter Twitter video is stupid. And they're like, oh, it gets so many views. Yeah, um, why would I ever stream? Where's the ads? Where? Why would I ever stream on this platform? It, you count, you ready? If I do this, okay? It counted this, whatever this was, as a view. Because anytime somebody scrolls by it, it counts as a view. So the numbers don't mean shit. Everyone, nobody calls it X. Nobody calls it X. Everyone calls it Twitter. Nobody calls it X. Again, the only people that call it X are people with blue check marks. Unless they call it X because it's an X website because it, it freaking died. Which is shitty because all the competitors are shitter. Like, oh, X is X. XYZ is better than Twitter. Well, if it was better than Twitter, we wouldn't be on Twitter still, would we? X is the dumbest name ever. Because here's the thing. If he bought Twitter, what, what did Twitter have going for it? It, it? Twitter isn't even a big social media site compared to like Facebook and YouTube and other social media sites. Twitter isn't that big. You have Twitter, the name brand, the, the, the logo tweets and like Twitter itself, the marketing and nomenclature and naming and ev like everything that was Twitter was the biggest value of Twitter. I'm going to call it X because I'm obsessed with X. 
So let's take everything that made Twitter valuable and just get rid of it. So what do you have? Well, they're called Zits. It's like a marketing 101 student be like, you're, you're stupid. This is the dumbest thing ever. You bought, you bought a site where the only thing of value on the site is, is the, the, the heritage, the nomenclature, the, the, the ecosystem, the, the wording and like the branding and you got rid of everything. So what is it actually worth? And it's, it's crashed. Over agreements is unfold. Uh, gigs, you, you missed it. So for, for those that are new, that are just tuning in now, um, usually on the Friday streams, once we hit the three hour mark, we turn the lights off and we just kind of turn into Nero after dark where we have some delicious beverages and we, we, we shoot the shit. This is old. Emma. Okay, he's been obsessed with X since the 90s. Because he wanted to like turn PayPal into X.com or something like that. He's owned X.com since like the 90s. It's like an obsession of him. He, he, Muskie is weird. He is, remember, you don't become a billionaire by being a sane, normal, happy, loving individual. You become a, a billionaire by being a, what current billionaire people are. It's worth, what the, what the, what are the Twitter files? Somebody find a box full of old, you know, company stuff. Media mogul. He's not a media mogul. Remember, Twitter was never even one of the bigger social media networks. Twitter, Twitter is like 15th in terms of like social media sizes. It's not big at all. All I know is that the people at SpaceX are happier that he's obsessed with Twitter now because it allows them to actually not have to deal with him at SpaceX. So that that's apparently like the only good thing is because he's like so preoccupied with like the Twitter bullshit that he cares more about that than so the people who actually run SpaceX like Gwen and like the actual senior engineers at SpaceX are like, great, we don't have to deal with them anymore. Twitter brand was worth roughly 25 billion, so we bought it for 40 billion and tanked it down to 35 and then dropped the printing at best, it's worth five to 10. Yeah, it's, it ain't worth shit. Half of Twitter is bots. Like the funny thing is, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an influencer apparently, it's my job. Um, so I see, you know, I've, I've got, a, a, I don't know, I'm big enough on this platform that when I get followers, like I've got 12,000 followers, the vast majority of them are bots. Whenever I get new followers, I go I, I go through every now and then, I gotta be careful because we, we've done this once before, where I went through like my new followers, so many of them are bots. A lot of them are mega bots because I follow some of the 3D pew pew, pew people, you know, all the power to you. Um, but like, Michael blah, 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 live service blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's a bot. Like so many of my followers now are just bots. Like this isn't a website. This isn't a website. It, it, it's all bots. I'm on it because that's where everyone is. Like there are like the, the group I follow, you know, the, 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 the 3D pre crew that I follow and whatnot. So there is, you know, a reason for me to be on this site. And the reason I don't go to the other sites because nobody's on the other sites. I'd rather be on the site with all the people plus bots than a site with none of the bots, but none of the people. So. Cause it's like, yeah, you know, Hey, what's Willow up to? Oh, she's working on this. Cool. You know, K2 Kevin, you know, Oh, here's some VZ bot stuff. Like, you know, Wexter's working, you know, uh, a lychee ambassador. And this is my for you. So this is like algorithmically suggested for me stuff. So it's like, I, I've kind of trained it enough and I've blocked and muted enough people that like the site is pretty good for me. Why would I, ooh, look, that's what we got. So it's like, you know, first I can go to like threads where there's like five people. 
and I can't even get like, I, I scroll through threads once a day if I'm lucky. Like that's all there is for me there. X is full of mod bots. <laughs> yeah, Daniel's everywhere. So many, so many people all his air now moves and that's still an awesome area to create the problem. Here's the thing. I, I don't like Musk is a douche, don't get me wrong. But would Tesla be where it is today without him? Would SpaceX be where it is today without him? Probably not. PT Barnum was a horrible person but he got the audience. There is, he does play a role in the show. And I'll leave it at that. I don't like the guy. I think, he, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't say that. I, I worked in the, okay. Hi, do you have a, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Did I did I leave it in here? Yeah, here it is. Hi, do you own a Sterling terminal that's rec rectangular? I built the mold for it. Okay. Um, I spoke with project managers, where it's like, hey, the mold will be ready on this date, and apparently Musk is like, no, we need it on this date. And he was like, it has to be this date or it's it's a failure and blah, blah, blah. And the moment he turns off the conversation, everyone else in the room is like, okay, so we're proceeding as normal, uh, ignore him. That's the kind of leader he is. Because he, he shows up, he danced around, and then when he leaves, everyone just goes back to like, okay, anyways, that's the kind of way he, the companies are he works. So, would SpaceX, Tesla, and what's the other one? There's like a third one, I can't remember what it is. Be what it is today without him? Probably not. Doesn't mean he's a dick, or doesn't mean he's not a dick. Um, so yeah. It, it, it's boring, com boring, oh God, boring company. Yeah, buy some flamethrowers, kiddies. Um, there, there is a place for everyone. Here's the thing. I'm sure if, if you had the chance to sit down and just, you know, on an afternoon, have a beer with him and shoot the shit, he's probably not a bad guy. He probably has some weird quirks. He's probably not a bad guy, but he's also a billionaire, which means he's got some, you know, you don't become a billionaire by being a nice guy. So. Is what it is. Is what it is. What am I drinking today? I've got this. I gotta start this drinking this stuff because it's got too much sugar in it. Um, Wolfhead cinnamon flavored whiskey. It's really delicious, and I'm drinking it straight. <laughs> I'm drinking it neat because it's delicious. Good people become bad people when they become powerful enough to surround themselves with people who only tell them. The thing is, who does he surround himself with? Like, I don't know anyone who, who hangs out with him regularly, like Elon is stooge. He's full of himself. He, he's, 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 a, he's a billionaire, right? He, you don't become a billionaire without, you know, it, it, it is what it is. <laughs> Mirrors. We got a po oh. politics. I didn't see politics. Where's politics? What happened to the 3D printing in Starfield? Do we want to go back to to? We could go back to Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I haven't played Starfield yet. I'm wait. Honestly, Starfield. I'll I'll get Starfield. Here's the thing. I will get Starfield at some point. After they optimize it a bit better, because you know, according to Todd Howard, you just need to buy better stuff. I'm sorry, Todd, but if a $600 graphics card can't run your game at 60 FPS at high settings, y'all need to fix your shit. Okay? Yeah. Um, he's a little called Russian ambassador, definitely. Yeah. Okay. 
the whole the whole Starlink shutdown thing is is a can of worms that I I could go into if you want me to go into the Starfield or Starfield the Starlink shutdown can of worm thing I could go into that um, but that's that that's opening a can of worms and I don't know you know I'm not Hassan and um, uh, the, 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 we aren't on Twitch and I'm not Hassan and Abi I'm, I don't think that's the kind of content I should be going into I could if you guys want me to but I really don't want to. We need more whiskey for that, yeah. The uh, DLSS patch. I don't like DLSS. I, I, I'm a firm believer that a game should run good without requiring DLSS. If you have to run DLSS for a game to run good on good equipment, and I'm sorry, a 3080 and a 3950X, so a, a, a 16 core processor with hyper threading and a 3080 should be able to run a game at 1080p ultra without needing DLSS. Go into it, oh God, I'm not gonna go into it. Okay, no, 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 Good morning, hey, Matthias, Mathis, is it Matthias or Mathis? I don't know, Alex Jones, oh God. I don't have the aluminum foil out here, I can't make a hat. Billionaires are just oligarchs, well, well yeah. Like I, okay, the reason, I play games at 1080p, I like my high frame rate. My, my main computer monitor is a 1080p 165 hertz monitor. Okay, I love, I you know, Doom Doom Eternal, maxed out settings, 165 hertz. Mm, I love that shit. Okay, I like smooth frame rates. Smooth frame rates and high DL, or um, anti-aliasing. I don't, I don't like jaggies. I don't like jaggies and I like high frame rates. That's how I like the game. So if you're, you know, shitty ass looking Bethesda game can't do high frame rate and non jaggies at 1080p on a 3080 and a 3950x you gotta fix your shit before I play your game you know what's funny we still have 200 people here how do I have 200 people here chat's not fast enough for 200 people if you if you're here right now say hi in chat I, I don't believe we have 200 people here y'all are bots uh, the, the Twitter bots have leaked into here. Um, so act two, what is the worst? Oh God, Nikita, okay. There we go, there's everyone. See, be active in chat. The more you are active in chat, the more fun the conversation is. My, okay, so here's, I've played through Baldur's Gate three times, or twice. I've gotten two end games, okay? Once, Dark Urge Redeemed, that was my second. My first one, I just played Tav, I played a goody two shoe because I, I I don't like making the NPC set. My third playthrough, I this was after the Benthira patch because if I'm gonna play bad, if I'm how how how, how do I word this correctly? Um, if I'm gonna be bad in a game where I make the NPC sad, it better be worth it. So I waited for the Benthira patch. Okay. Um, for those that know that know, if you know, you know, so I, w I waited for the minty patch. Okay. So I'm like, I'm going to play bad so I can get minty in my, in my, in my party. Um, I feel sorry for all the tieflings. There's a lot of dead tieflings. So to make up for that, I decided to do a not quite bad, but still a dick bard that I'm actually playing now. So I've done two full playthroughs that have gotten to the end. And now I'm on playthrough three. I kind of paused and then I started 3.5, which I'm actually further ahead than three, um, where I played a bar, a bard who's a dick, but is still a good guy. Um, so yeah. So I'm, I'm about to, um, pretty much after the stream ends, I'm gonna go attack um, Catherine Thorm. I just freed uh, Dame Aelin, for those that know that know, and I'm about to go attack uh, Moonrise. So yeah, it, 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 if you think um, Starfield is a good role-playing game, play Baldur's Gate, trust me. Douchey music man has a mood. I'm, uh, I'm playing generic synthwave. Um, 
you, you need to play Baldur's Gate. Um, if you, okay. I love Mass Effect. I used to play Mass Effect once a year, okay? Literally, I, I Mass Effect was my jam from 2007 to 2012 when Mass Effect 3 came out. I played that game every year. Every year up until a couple of years ago, I would do an annual playthrough of, all, of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 back to back and, and, and beat them all and, and that was my jam. Every year I would do a playthrough of the Mass Effect 3 series. If you like that kind of commitment to character interaction, Baldur's Gate 3 is an 80 to 90 to 120 hour game single playthrough. If you take the time and you fully invest with a, with a better payoff and a better game, simple as that. It, Baldur's Gate 3, if, if you like if you like immersing yourself in a world, Baldur's Gate 3 is where it's at. If you like just killing time at surface level, go to XYZ, explore Loot Creighton 527, and Starfield's your thing. It's Baldur's Gate 3 in VR. No, Baldur's Gate 3 is a CRPG, which is a classic RPG, which for for to tone it to to, to lay it lay it down um it, it's dungeons and dragons literally Baldur's gate is in the dungeons and dragons universe and follows dungeons and dragons rules there's some weird non D, &D stuff um larry in the studio that made it has a, a a big fan of like environmental interactions the fact that you can kill end game bosses that are like like full on end game bosses by literally shoving them off a cliff into a chasm in one return kind of breaks some of it. But that's Larian's thing. It is it it is Dungeons and Dragons. Like if 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 you have the Dungeons and Dragons books, that is the guide to Baldur's Gate. <laughs> um it's it's a top down CRPG. So when you go into combat, it's all turn based. Um boss that should have flying <laughs> go it, it's funny i i finally watched the dungeons and dragons movie after playing Baldur's gate and i appreciate it so much better now that i actually understand Bald like dungeons and dragons rules a little bit i kind of really want to play dungeons and dragons um but like watching the D, D movie after playing a ton of Baldur's gate it's like it's it, it, it's it, it's the um oh, what's his name when you're like you're like I understood that reference. I, I know that place. I know those people. Harpers. I know Harpers. He said the thing. So yeah. Um, it, but if you're it, like literally, uh, honestly, Baldur's Gate Three is game of the year. I don't care what anyone says. If, if anyone's like Starfield, this, um, the Harry Potter game, it, they're they're not bad games. Not bad games. But in terms of like game of the year. Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. And you're, you're also talking to somebody who just like beat Armored Core 6 three times. I've, I've gotten the true ending of both on Armored Core. So in terms of game of the year, yeah, Baldur's Gate. Diablo, Diablo is a joke. The fact that 40 hours is what it takes to beat Diablo 3 or Diablo 4 before you get to the stupid pay to win grind and that gets you to the end of Act One of Baldur's Gate, and which has a much better story. Yeah, yeah, Baldur's Gate is, or yeah, Diablo's a joke. But, yeah, Blizzard's dead. If Starfield gets Game of the Year, Starfield is not a bad game, but Starfield is an ocean of surface level. Simple as that. Except for surface you can't have yeah you can land anywhere on the planet except for these three 10 by 10 kilometer air, uh areas that are mostly emper empty and procedurally generated i 
I wish, oh man. I wish I had, I don't have, I've been clipping some of the, um, some of my gameplay, but it's, it's all saved on my desktop. So I can't pull up anything. Yeah, Baldur's Gate. It's funny because I played Baldur's Gate ages ago. I never beat it, but I, I did. I can't remember the BG1 or BG2. I played it at some point ages ago. Like, and by ages ago, I mean like 10 plus years ago. Um, and I was like, eh, it's pretty cool, but it's like weird perspective and whatnot. And then it's like, so you, you don't need to play BG1 or BG2 to enjoy Baldur's Gate 3. Um, watch a YouTube video that just kind of, because I don't know about you. Okay, spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3. Um, when Saravok shows up, I I don't know who it is, but it, if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, okay, the voice actor for Saravok, like when Saravok shows up, so I've never, I've, I had to watch a video to kind of like get the whole plot of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. And then when you're playing Baldur's Gate 3, you know, I never really like, played Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 when Saravok shows up in Baldur's Gate 3 and, you, and the same voice and the the voice actor is just mm, you're just like okay I'm in I'm in I'm in let's do this I love your voice love your voice the fact there are bad guys like when you were a kid okay I've talked about this when you're playing Pokemon red or blue okay you're we wee, wee little kitty Late 90s, you got Pokemon on your on your Game Boy that you're you're playing when your parents are driving, and every time you get the light, you know, you get the, the road light, you can actually see. And it's like you get to the end of Nugget Bridge, it's like, I'm oh, joining Team Rocket, and you click yes. But your character's like, no. Yeah, one of the one of the three bad guys in, in Baldur's Gate is like, hey, you, you want to share power? And you'd be like, Yeah, I'm down. He's like, cool. Let's do this. Me and you, let's do this. And you're like, okay, cool. And you're like, okay. It's like you're expected to not, but you can, and the game goes with it. It's like, hey, do you, do you want to defend all these innocent tieflings from like the the evil goblins? And then you go, it's like go go kill the goblin leaders, and you go to the goblin camp, and the one chick's like, hey, you want to kill the tieflings? And you're like, no, and you kill her, and that's it. You you kill her, and you move on with your life. But if you join with her, she has like a whole thing later in the game where you like meet her and she's like, hey, you know, you you could have killed me and I just would have been another dead bad guy in your conquest, but you didn't and gave me a chance. And you're like, oh shit, the first time I played the game, I killed you. Like, I didn't think anything of it because it was like kill one of three or kill three of three. And you were just the second I killed a three. And it's like, you are a full companion with an entire quest line. And I just, you know, threw you off a cliff. Literally, I, I shoved you off a cliff the first time I killed you. It's like, oh shit, what did I do? Or you can go to Planet XYZ and raid a, a, a bad guy compound that looks like exactly like the one on the other compound you raided for, for points. And then, of course, you, you open up the console and you use the same command used in Oblivion to add a thousand credits to your, to your wallet. Yeah. Yeah. One game actually has choices. <laughs> Like, like literally there's like, oh, hey, I have to go in this area. I have to go through this portal to, to get somebody defend me. If you, if you don't actually defend it, he's dead. That's it. His, his, he's gone for the rest of the game. That's it. I'm sure BG3, okay, Klee. Okay, so Klee, you've actually gotten further in Armor Core. Cause I haven't, I haven't S ranked all the missions because what it really annoys me is you have to do the mission again to S rank it. So you have to like beat the mission, then you have to redo the mission to get the S rank. So I haven't done that. So Klee, you've actually beaten more armored core than me, but I still beat you to, to the end game. I, I remember how long it took you to beat the Balteus. Yeah, I, I really wish New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus would auto grade you way faster. That's because I figured out dual shotties and dual needlers before you simple as that i i we need to do some multiplayer paul we need to do some multiplayer armor core
The problem is we're both gonna roll up with the exact same mech. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, I got, I got dual Zimmermans and Needlers. What do you got? Oh, I got, I got dual Zimmermans and Needlers. Oh, okay, let's do this. Why are you going through it again on Xbox? You've already, you've already beat it on Steam. Why would you play it again on Xbox? Keyboard and mouse, so much quicker. I, I love how there's an unlock in Armor Core 6 where for it gives you fast 180 turn. Like you can push a, a button combo to do an immediate 180. Whereas the people playing on computer with keyboard and mouse just go. <laughs> oh, not all your friends. Well then show them the ways. Show them what you've learned, my Padawan. Someone's got dual kneelers and Zimmermans. The other person has dual Zimmermans and kneelers. <laughs> yeah, Armored Core is awesome. If, if you want just like... Armored Core is awesome. That was a fun game. Although it's like, I, I, I got Armored Core because I was like, okay, I, I beat Baldur's Gate. I, I need something to, to do different before Starfield came out. And then I... I while I was playing Armored Core 6, which you have to beat three times to get to the end, because like to get, you have to beat New Game, then you have to beat New Game Plus Plus, and then after you beat both New Game and New Game Plus Plus and done different endings for each one, then you unlock New Game Plus Plus True Ending. Um, so it took 24 hours of playtime roughly. Because once you beat it the first time, you figure out what mech design is is broken and you just roll through New Game Plus and New Game Plus Plus. Um, but it, it, it's like, while I was playing Armor Core 6, I started watching some of the early access reviews, which I'm sorry, playing paying $100 to get a game early is bullshit. Okay, you wanna know why Starfield did New Game, or New Game? Did early access it's because when you release a game on steam reviews don't count until the game goes live and reviews only count if you don't refund the game so if you release starfield early you can claim sales because you don't count refunds you count just number of sold so you get a lot of people who buy the game early, play it for a bit, go, this ain't for me, because this is like every other Bethesda game. They refund it. They can't leave a review because reviews aren't visible. So you get like that initial hype of the game without actually having to deal with like the sales of the game. I, I'm not a fan of like, the whole early access thing is bullshit in my opinion. Um, like paying, like, oh, you get the deluxe edition, you can play three days early. Yeah, that, that's just the pump numbers. That's the pump numbers and it, it you can't review it. So, yeah. Uh, you need the Spider-Man meme, but it's ACs with dudes in. Oh, there's a ton of them. There is a ton of them. The Armored Core subreddit is full of memes. It's awesome. The problem is I'm Canadian, so I keep spelling armored with a U. Oh, go away. I'm moored. Yeah, I'm Canadian, so I, I put U's in all my stuff. Amir Core. Amir Core. He did a robot. To the ground. He did a boom boom. Uh -huh. Amir Core, hey buddy. And I feel bad for Rusty. Rusty was awesome. 
Armored Core soundtrack is pretty boss. If you get the chance, listen to the Armor Core soundtrack. It's pretty boss. Armored is the correct English. Exactly. What is this O-R-E, O-R, it's O-U-L. I'm just happy we got an Armored Core game after like, I my first PlayStation 2 game was Armored Core 2. Like that was like my, my jam back in the day. There's so many great moments in that game. Dude, New Game Plus Plus Final Boss when Air shows up to like fight beside you and you're like, hmm. And you're just like, I'm gonna go do my own thing because I'm gonna kill the boss before I can finish talking because you figured out how broken it is. The uh, Starfield, okay. One of the final boss, okay, it's hard to say final boss because the act three of Baldur's Gate is very open-ended like you can fight multiple people in different orders whatever the hardest boss in the game okay the hardest boss in in Baldur's gate is an optional boss that you don't have to fight you can and you should but he's optional dude has a disney villain song where he sings about like not not like you know ooh, no, the dude actually sings about like he's he he sings his own Disney villain boss thing while he fights you. Beat that. Although um, the Rusty's uh, uh, what is it? What what's 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 the yeah, uh, Rusty's theme? The second one, Rusted Pride. Rusted Pride is pretty boss, though. So. Yeah, yeah. Steel Hay look up Steel Haze. Parentheses. Rusted Pride. That that that's like Rusty's theme when you like when he alts. And you're like, Ooh, so good. Cause like the whole thing of Armored Core is you have your energy gauge. Okay, so you have your energy gauge and that controls how much you can boost, how much you can like dash, how much you can over, I, I call it over boost because you know, old dog here, but like uh, combat boost, it, it, it controls how fast you can move around. And when you deplete it, you gotta let it recharge, it's different. There is, you, I, most people play the good playthrough first before doing the bad playthrough. There is a final level where there is no energy gauge. They, they're like, oh, we're so high up in the atmosphere, you know? And then you fight the one guy who's kind of like you've been your buddy through the whole game and you fight him in a super fast mech and you have unlimited energy. And it is just boss because the, the soundtrack hits, the, 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 the line, like the character interaction hits because the whole game you got like this boost gauge and you're constantly monitoring this this gauge your energy gauge and then they just like go for it and you're just like oh so good so good and you got the the soundtrack playing you know what fuck it let me yeah so you, so you're like you're, you're you're the whole game you got this bar at the bottom and you're monitoring it because you know if you if you if you if you if you send it too much you gotta like wait for it to re, like you know it's, it's an energy gauge right it's like Epona in Legend of Zelda right if you if you use all the all the carrots they take a while to recharge but if you get down to one carrot it'll recharge quicker but then you get that level where you can just as, as David says send it just 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 send it and you just go it, it just go 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 you got unlimited energy boost as fast as you want just just go and the best part is all these soundtracks for the like the final fights for all these characters you you hear them earlier in the game the like i love when games do where like the final soundtrack is like you've heard their theme earlier but when you finally get to their final theme it's like the, the the badass version of it. Like they they go all out. It, it's like you know you know Super Saiyan type thing. 
Sephiroth. Like, it, exactly. Like, where you, you hear little hints of it earlier in the game. You're like, okay, this uh, theme is pretty good. But then you get, like, to the final ending, and you're like, it's their theme, but better. And you're just like, send it. Just, just send it. Unlimited energy, just go. Literally, my, my, my two favorite games of the year so far are Armor Core 6, which is a distant second to Baldur's Gate. Because it, it Armor Core is a much shorter game. You, you can beat Armor Core six hours. If you, if you know what you're doing, it's a six hour game. It's not long, but it's just, it's good. It's very good. It's a very, like a game doesn't need to be long to be good. Starship. I've heard the Starship Troopers game was good. Um, I haven't played it yet. That seems like a game you need to play with friends. It, it, you want to roll the list of kids? Um, yeah, the Starship Troopers, like, I, I love me some Starship Troopers. Right, I, I understand the joke of Starship Troopers, so I... But when I saw that game, I'm like, I want to buy it, but I kind of want to... Like, you need to play with friends. They turned the propaganda film into a game. It was... Jonathan! Jonathan! The brother in Christ! It's a novel! It's a novel. I've actually read the Starship Troopers book. Um, let me, okay. So that was the Armored Court. Let me pull up Raphael. Raphael. Okay. This is Raphael's final cut. We're going to play... This is the hardest boss in Baldur's Gate 3. Um, anyways, I've read the Starship Troopers book. Like the actual proper Starship Troopers book. Um, the movie mm, picks and chooses, but it kind of gets the idea. Um, it, it's satire. The, the game, the original game, I remember playing a game in like the, it sucked. But they have like a newer game that's like a, um, a team capture the objective type game that actually is pretty good i've seen people play it it seems pretty good but it seems like a game you kind of want to play with people you know so maybe i should organize a game night we'll figure it out hell 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 has its wars hell hell effect in the cause curtain falls but hold your applause for now down here come the claws. When you're when your hardest boss in the game has a Disney villain song where he sings it, you've won game of the year. I'm sorry. Good morning from Sweden. Um I can't remember what Pooty uh, Happy Morning and PewDiePie to you. I, I, I was gonna say good morning, but that's the Germans. Yeah, the, the Baldur's Gate soundtrack is boss. I actually have it in, in my Spotify, like, recommended. <laughs> Hedge? Uh, uh, Ikea meet the ball. The Great Mighty Poo is... A, the Great Mighty Poo is the greatest video game um, villain soundtrack of all time. I, 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 I hold no qualms about that. I agree. I fully agree. I hated the fascist humans and start to remove a lot of the bugs. So here's the thing, John. The whole point is it is satire. Like, the, the whole point of the Starship Troopers movie is it is satire. All the characters are super attractive. All, like, like, by the end, the bad guys are wearing, you know, the bad guy of World War II clothes. Like, the whole point it is a satire. 
like that's the whole point of it, it, it is supposed to be taking the piss the whole time kind of thing um and it, you you kind of roll with it because that's like the whole point of the movie series so It's got tons of bugs and you shoot them and explode. It's got tons of bugs. Like a Bethesda game? I'm so happy I figured out why the stream deck wasn't working. Uh, what are we at right now? We still got 177 people here. After Dark? Of course After Dark. The plates are off. No, he didn't. Uh, do, I, do I still use my Ender 3v2? Solutions! No! It, it's, it's in a box of parts. I mean, I've got mult, I've got 10 Vorons, a bamboo, multiple Prusas, um, and, and several other high quality Core XY based enclosed printers. Why the fuck would I use an Ender? Uh, Starship Trooper has great commentary track, explains a lot. Yeah, the whole point of Starship Trooper is it is a critique. It is supposed to be stupid, over-the-top criticism. Uh, the Empire in Star Wars is also space Nazi. It is. Uh, the Empire, if you notice, like, the Empire all speak. And it's funny, because the Empire in Star Wars, they all have, like, British accents and whatnot. Um, it, it's, you know, it's cyclical. It, it, it rhymes, right? Space Marines from Starship Troopers inspired the Space Marines from 40k and I hear James Cameron had a cast of Aliens right? They did. Um, Starcraft was originally a Warhammer series um, or supposed to be Warhammer but like they never got the license that's why a lot of the Starcraft universe looks a lot like Warhammer. It, again it's also it's it's like poetry it rhymes as, Jane, as um, George Lucas put. Um, but I the, the Starship Troopers books are actually, if if you are any sort of military aficionado, um, read the actual Starship Troopers book. It's pretty good. I've read it, like front to back, the actual Starship Troopers book. It is pretty good. It is pretty good. Spaceballs is better. Well, I'm not gonna argue with that. Spaceballs was better. Um, yes. Wish more Warhammer, the Astarte shorts. Oh my, the Astarte shorts were amazing. The problem is you can't find them anymore because um, Warhammer, whatever, Games Workshop bought out the, the guy who made them and like you can't find them on YouTube anymore. But yeah, the I, I've played Warhammer. I dabbled in Warhammer for a bit. I had a 3000 point Imperial Guard army at one point. I don't have anything anymore. Um, I got out of it because my local my local friendly games workshop store closed. Um, so I never got to like, I came back from a summer of doing army shit and they were closed and all the people I used to play with, I, I didn't have non in-person contact with because I, I would just interact with them at the friendly like local games workshop. And so that was it. Um, so I ended up selling everything and whatnot, but I used to have a 3000 point Imperial Guard army. Um, so yeah. Is on YouTube, just re-upload it. Yeah, but it's not by the original person. Watching Spaceballs as a child with no contact is... You know what's funny? Um, the the one Spaceballs bad guy with the helmet or whatever, who's like combing the desert, who says we ain't found shit. Yeah, that's Tuvok from Star, uh, Star Trek Voyager. That's Tuvok. <laughs> you got the Games Workshop cult? Um, it's funny, I did before I got into 3D printing, which is hilarious because the amount of 3D printing files that would be on Games Workshop lawyer's ass is quite large. The trooper is really obvious. We went to watch it super super and we got, immediately got it. It was like, yeah. Although I will say the actual, okay. They've made several Starship Troopers movies. The only one actually worth watching is the first one. The effects hold up pretty good. The effects hold up pretty good in the first one. And it, the, the 
as a standalone movie, the first Starship Troopers is pretty good. Spaceballs fact that I always found out Tuvok and they had no clue what I'm talking about. Star Trek? Okay, I got I gotta watch I haven't watched any of the new Star Trek stuff. Um last Star Trek thing I watched was like I've watched a good chunk of Voyager. I've watched some of the movies. The last one I watched was like the second new movie. The one with like Khan. Where they're like, oh Khan's not in it, and then yeah, he's in it. Original, Robo Original Robocop was awesome. I mean, my brother in Christ, I live next to, Detroit is over there. I can drive 20 minutes that way and be in Detroit. I know what it's like. I love, I love the original Robocop. Even Robocop 2 was pretty good. Lower Decks is pretty good. I've heard good things about Lower Decks. Uh, Tim Russ, Tuvok play Worf's brother in The Next Generation. <laughs> yeah, the three year. Okay, so there was a Starship Troopers CGI series that I grew up watching, which never got an ending, which annoyed the heck out of me as a kid, which I found out was actually based on the T or based on the books, which is actually pretty good. Um, but the I, I know they made like three live action Starship Troopers and they got really weird and low budget. Um, so I haven't watched them. Or I might have watched them, but I can't remember. New Detroit is, by the way. It, it, it's funny, like Detroit Become Human. Um, I never played that game, but I watched like a playthrough of it. There are, there are some games that I've never played that I've watched. Like it, it's really nice as somebody who doesn't do console stuff. Um, when s there are a few YouTube channels that they take a game and turn it into a movie. So I haven't played God of War or God of War 2, but I've watched the movie of it where it's like a six to nine hour movie, which is actually pretty good. I, I, I got no problem watching that, but I'm not going to go buy a console and play a game when I can just watch a nine hour YouTube video. If it's, if it's not something I'm like, it's $600 for a console. It's stupid. So anyways, um, Detroit become human, and it's like, yeah, you mean right over there? Right over there. It's weird. God of War is me. The thing is, God of War, I, I watched it. I watched God of War 2. The plot is amazing. And this is something, I never touched the console. I don't have a PS5. I got a PS4. I got the Destiny PS4, the white one. Um, and that was the last game I ever played on PS4 was Destiny 1. Um... God of War 1 and God of War 2, I know the whole plot of those games because I watched a, a, a six to nine hour YouTube video on both that condensed the entire game down to a movie. And I'm like, yeah, those are good. I'm not gonna play them though, but those are good plots. Dread was amazing. Dread was amazing. Especially like the actual Dread movie, not Judge Dread with, uh, what's his name, but Dread, he kept the helmet on. The atmosphere was great. Dread was awesome. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 is the best movie I ever played. It was. I, I, I got Hideo Kojima. You know, props to him. Good stories. Good stories. Yeah, the one with Keith Urban. Yeah. That, that was a very... I remember I saw that in theaters. And it, it just... It was good. It was a very good adaptation. I kind of pissed they never got a sequel, but not everything needs a sequel. Zone of the, oh, Zone of the Enders 2. Zone of the Enders 2 was so good. I never played the first one. Um, but I remember, I, I remember I went to Best Buy and it's like, I want to, my mom was like, you can rent a PS2 game. And I'm like, I don't know what to rent. I'll get, I'll get Zone of the Enders 2. And I beat that. So good, so good. Keith Urban is a singer. Keith, Ur I, I like him as an actor. He he he's very good. A bit boring, yeah. It, it, from what I understand, it's like watch a recap of of, of Zo One and then play Zo Two, and yeah. 
in the boys i haven't i've never watched the boys i don't watch tv shows i after after game of thrones after game of thrones i will not watch a tv show until it ends because i was burned so hard by investing my time in an ongoing show with game of thrones that i will not watch a tv show until it ends because i'm not investing eight years of my life in a show that could end like shit and completely invalidate everything so i will watch the boys if it ends good mandalorian I watched season one and two. I haven't, I, I haven't watched anything Star Wars since season two of Mandalorian. And I haven't watched anything Marvel since Multiverse of Madness. Anthony Starr's Homelander is perfect. I've heard, I've heard very good things about the boys. I, I'm just waiting for it to end. I'm just, I'm waiting for it to end. What if the ending sucks and everything is great? <sighs> to an extent. To an extent. I'm okay with like... Okay. For a reference, I'm a huge Baldur's Gate fan in case you haven't realized. The ending of Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of meh. Okay? They've kind of improved it with a few patches lately. But the ending is kind of like... Huge build up and then it's like, okay, the end. And you're like... <sighs> I, I kind of want the, I, I kind of want you to like send me off, but it just, it, it ends. And I'm like, okay, you can kind of do better, but I'm like, okay, the story made up for it. But after Game of Thrones, I'm not going to watch a show and invest years of investing, watching, you know, weekly episodes for it to like the let Peter off. I'm like, no, either like, cause the difference is a game. I can find out it has a bad ending in a day. A show, I'm not waiting a season for a bad enemy after investing several years of my life. I haven't watched any Marvel since Logan. Logan was very good. I really like Logan. I'm, I'm holding out for Deadpool 3. You know who's responsible for the boys? Amazon? I will not watch Game of Thrones because of how much shit people talk. It literally, Game of Thrones killed it. Okay, season one to four of Game of Thrones was like amazing. Okay, season five, six was like, eh, eh, bad, you know, Battle of, the, Battle of the Bastards was pretty good. Seven was kind of like, okay, okay, what's going on? And then season eight just tanked it. It, it completely killed it. Although apparently um, the new show, Dances of Dragon or whatever it's called is pretty good, but the writer strike has fucked it up. So, uh, Game of Thrones was enough. The problem is though, it's since Game of Thrones, what show has been consistently good that ended good? Netflix and The Witcher. I, I, I. That's another thing. The Witcher. I played The Witcher games. Um, I never read the books. I'm, I'm not a book person, but. The fact that they had Henry Cavill, who is a main stream, like huge actor, go, hey, I'm a fucking nerd. I love this shit. Let's do this. And then the creators of the show went, yeah, we're going to change this. And he's like, but the character wouldn't do that. And they're like, yeah, but we're going to make him do that. And he's like, I don't like that. And, the, and, and like, no. Now, I, I stopped watching uh, The Witcher after season one. Once I found out they were fucking with, uh, with Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill is a huge nerd, okay? I respect Henry Cavill as an actor and as a person, and, and they fucked him, and I, I, I won't give any credit to the show. So after season one of watching The Witcher, I, I won't watch any of it after. They, they fucked it pretty bad. Watching The Expanse now. I've, okay, The Expanse is something I gotta watch. I watched season one of The Expanse. I never watched anything after that, and I've heard it, it's pretty good. So I, I gotta catch up on The Expanse, because it's over now. So I, I can enjoy it. I've heard good things, I just haven't got around to it. Because I like it so much. Yeah, The Witcher is a good universe. It's a weird, like, it's a Western European, like, or correction, Eastern European mythology. It's a great universe to be for something to be set in, 
and then the writers of the show kind of just fucked it. And then they had like Henry Cavill who literally worked out so much to get into the shape of, of the Witcher. Like he literally got so in shape he was ripping through his costume with muscle. Roids aside, I don't care if he did roids. He, he, he did what he had to do. The guy gave it his all. And the writers of the show fucked him like that. I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, Battlestar. Battlestar, the ending of... Okay, Battlestar Galactica. I watched Battles. BSG was my jam back in the day. And then they ended it with like, eh, it's Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So many shows falter at the end. It's so bad. So many shows. Um, Breaking Bad ended good. I never actually watched... Like, I was never invested in Breaking Bad, but Breaking, Breaking Bad was one of the few big shows that actually ended properly, in my opinion. Stargate SG-1. Um, yeah, when it ended at the end of Season 7, it was amazing. I, I, I After, you know, Baldur's... Or Baldur's Gate. Stargate SG-1, when it ended at the end of Season 7... Um, and completely ended the show and nothing ever happened after and there was no seven eight nine uh, Or what eight nine ten or whatever it was the the ori arc never happened Yeah, I mean it wasn't that bad like compared to like Game of Thrones final seasons the ori arc wasn't bad, but yeah No stargate was good. I, I After stargate ended I got into stargate I started watching Stargate um, when I was in high school, so that was 2000. When did what was it? What was SG One season? Um, Stargate SG One ran from 2005. Er, season nine, 2006. Okay, 2007. I got in, I remember binging. Okay. So it finished in 2007. Yeah, 2000. I binged Stargate SG-1. All of it. In two weeks. I was in college. I was working at a Sobeys. So a grocery store part-time. In one... During summer, I binged Stargate SG-1 seasons 1 to 9 or whatever it was in like two weeks. I would wake up, watch shows all day until I went to bed. Except for times I went to work. And I, I was working part-time at a grocery store. And I binged that whole Stargate SG-1 block in like two weeks. I, I illegally torrented all the episodes. Sorry, Showtime, Canada. But yeah. And then I, I watched some Atlantis. I didn't watch all of it. I watched the movies and then I watched all of SGU. Um, great, great ideas. The Stargate, Stargate universes, I love it. But like, it just, it ended. And it, it's like they haven't been able to revive it. And it's like, eh. It's what I call a rare neutral sci-fi show. It's not that great. It's yeah, Stargate SG-1 was very good because you, you, there was an overarching plot, but you didn't have to catch every episode. There was like, you know, a few episodes would progress the plot, but then you would just have like filler random fun episodes like that they didn't have anything to do with anything. And then you're like, whatever. Like the episode that they had the Homer's voice actor was in. It. it was like, whatever. But yeah. Is the Stargate Universe just Book of Mormon? Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Stargate was a good was a good series. And also, uh, Michael Shanks. I, 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 I love how he went from like the complete nerdy guy to like hot. <laughs> Because he got like, he started off as like the r random nerdy guy, and then by the end, he's like a gun toning hot guy. It's like, what the f? What happened here? What? Okay. 
or they go back in time. Exactly. It, it, it was like, it, it, it was, it was like a, it was weird. You don't see that anymore anymore. You don't see like shows nowadays where it's like, it, 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 it's random, but like there's an overarching, it's like every, ep if you don't, if you missed last week's episode, you have no idea what's going on. Like that kind of show doesn't exist anymore, except for the Simpsons, which needs to die. It, it, it's weird. It's really weird. Yeah, like the the syndicated show has died. It, it it's really weird. Um, that that's kind of yeah. Let's get some more music. There we go. Uh, One Piece has been awesome. I'm I'm not getting involved in One Piece at all. Um, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to parrot the words of a sage Twitch streamer by the name of Pave Money Wubby. One Piece is at episode 1000. The, the show One Piece is at episode 1000. The, 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 the animu is at episode 1000 plus whatever. The manga is further ahead. The... TV show on Netflix of One Piece is eight episodes and it covers up to episode 40 of the show. Either they're never going to catch up and they're never going to end or they're going to skip a ton of shit. I'm not getting invested in a show with no clear ending. Simple as that. I, I am not getting invested in a show with literally, if they want to catch up to where One Piece is currently in at the current rate, it will take them 20 fucking years. Simple as that. If, if they come out and say, hey, we're we're gonna skip a ton and we'll 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 catch up quick, maybe. Okay? If if they say, hey, we're only gonna cover the first arc and we'll end it differently, but we'll end it as its own thing, maybe. But as of now. The current run of Netflix, One Piece, is up to the equivalent of episode 40 of a 1,000 episode anime. I'm not going to invest my time watching something with no clear ending. Simple as that. Gotcha, bitch. So as, as uh, you know, Len Currency Williams would say, I'm not getting involved in that shit about the journey. The problem is I'm okay with journeys. I'm okay with journeys, okay? Again, I, I binged all of Stargate SG-1 in, in two weeks, but that had an ending. I'm not gonna get involved, especially after, after Game of Thrones, I'm not gonna get involved in a TV show where there is no ending. Journey before destination. <sighs> I like ending. I, I like having a clear defined ending. Uh, they are skipping a ton of One Piece action. But still, I know Oda the writer, like the guy who created One Piece, approves of the current thing. Because he's getting paid. But there's a difference between approving of 40 of 1,000 and like again hey we skipped you know we cut down 40 episodes into eight okay what are you doing about the next you know 960 so lost yeah lost same thing lost then i get a heat pump from the garage yet yeah, winter is coming we'll figure it out worst comes to worst in the garage i get a uh, little radiant heater and wear sweaters out here I ever see Mr. Robot? I've heard good things about Mr. Robot, but I never watched it because I don't have cable or satellite. So I never watched it. <laughs> um, Stargate also got a lot of support from the United States. They did. 
Um, there were actually times in Stargate where they had actual acting United States Air Force um, officers show up in the show, which I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a former military guy myself. Well, good for them. Uh, Picard was... I've heard Picard season one and two was pretty shit and Picard season three was pretty good. Mr. Robot is in Amazon. Am well, okay, would it be Amazon Canada? Because again, Canadian. The problem, I, there was one show I wanted to watch that was about the, um, there was that Russian sub that sunk in the Pacific near Hawaii that they like raised up and there's like a whole disclosure thing named after the ship that pulled it up. Um, but it was on Amazon. I'm like, I'm going to watch it. And it was only on Amazon US and I'm like, fuck. Not Red October. That's the one with uh, Sean Connery. Is Sean Connery still alive? No, he's not. Okay. Yeah, he died three years ago. Shit. That sucks. We still got Morgan Freeman, though. VPN. I don't want to deal with that. And, and, until Nord VPN wants to sponsor this shit, I ain't, I ain't paying for a VPN. Yeah, he's dead in 2020. Hey, remember, remember, kitties. You're the man now, dog. You're the man now, dog. There's money punny. <laughs> That was one of my biggest disappointments was the Star, uh, Star Wars, um, James Bond. I was, I was, I really loved the whole um, big brain theory that James Bond was a code name, like 007 and James Bond was the code name. And that like each James Bond was a different person that was given the code name James Bond. And then Skyfall kind of like canceled all that by making it, no, no, no. He's, he's, and I was like, that was like, I was really hoping that there would be a, like, it kind of sucks that Marvel made multiverse thing, like a whole overarching thing. But I was really hoping there would be a James Bond movie one day with one of the older James Bonds. It's like, you know, you know, it's a code name type thing. Like Pierce Brosnan shows up in one of the Daniel Craig movies or whatever. Uh, Top Boy. Never heard of Top Boy. Uh, Majesty's Secret Service. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I've watched a bunch of the old ones, and I've seen everything from the Brosnan era on. Like, in, in my opinion, like, okay, as, as a kid, you know, I was born in 88. So, for me, James Bond is Pierce Brosnan. So... That's like, when, when I think James Bond, I still think Pierce Bras and Goldeneye. Am I still alive? Yeah, I'm still alive. We're, we're in Nero After Dark. Was it Jordan Lazabee? And the, yeah, that was like the oddball where it's like, the he only played James Bond once, right? Johnny English. <laughs> The problem is with the Brosnan ones, they got really weird by the end. Like, Goldeneye was great. And then by the end, it got like really weird. And they're like, yeah, we need to reset the universe again. Tomorrow Never Dies was pretty good too. Mostly because it had what's her name in it. She's pretty good. Uh, she's got an Oscar too. I can't remember her name. Uh, the old one. I've seen the old ones. Like I've I've seen a bunch of the Sean Connery and like the the old you know Doctor No and like the Sean Connery ones. Like I I've seen a bunch of the old Bonds. I haven't seen them all, but there's like I've seen a bunch of like the original ones. 
with the original two actors. And then I, I've seen everything from the Pierce Brosnan era on. Austin Powers. Okay, it, it's Austin Powers. It, okay, it's kind of like seeing how like, the best Star Trek movie is Galaxy Quest. You only live twice. Uh, I've seen you. Remember Torn or er, Living Daylights? What was the one where uh, they had the blimp? Roger Moore, the terrible actor, but he was such a good guy. I can't get. Majesty. I don't think I've seen that one. Never go, never surrender. Exactly. Galaxy Quest is the best Star Trek movie ever. By grab Thar's hammer, you shall be avenged. Am I still live? Yeah, I'm still live, Steve. Five hour stream. Are we at five hours? What am I at? Five hours and 22 minutes. It is what it is. It is what it is. The Orville. I've heard good things about the Orville. Um, but again, I'm waiting for the show to end before I watch it. I, it, it's again, I'm very, I won't invest myself in a, in a, in a network TV show until it ends. Peter Sellers was the best. Wait a minute. Peter Sellers wasn't James Bond. No, he, he. It doesn't like getting his heart broken. After Game of Thrones, I won't invest myself in a, in a weekly TV show until it ends. After Game of Thrones. Nope, I've, I've, I've had my heart broken once. Blimpy, a video kill. Okay, a video kill, I remember that one. Heroes. Heroes was another show that broke me. Oh, this is the night songs. Okay. I know. I'm like, this was the song that just played on the, the game. <laughs> uh, so you wait five years for a series to end to watch it. I will because I've got enough shit to watch. Like I, I watch YouTube. I watch YouTube and Twitch. I mean, I get plenty of content off YouTube. I've, I've been on YouTube since 2006. I, I'm subscribed to enough channels that deliver the content I like to watch. I At any given moment, I go on YouTube and watch continuously. Um, and then if a Twitch streamer who I you know follow is live, there's another several hours of content. So at any moment, I have enough. Okay, I think we're gonna call it there. <laughs> um, this used to last seven hours. It does not. So I, I, I think, I think we're gonna call it there, folks. Um, it turned off. I turned it back on. It's beeping. Well, that's it, folks. We're, we're gonna call it there. I, I, I punch in Zoom, but the Stream Deck is now powering my laugh. Um, I used to get seven hours out of this. Apparently now it's five hours and 22 minutes. Um, yeah. DJI, yeah. It, it, well, no, this is the road. This is the road. Um, so we're gonna call it there. Hope you had fun. 
Um, as always, I think we'll make this a thing because it kind of became a thing and I think we're going to make it a thing now where the, the Saturday streams, once we hit the three hour mark, we'll, we'll, we'll make it the after hours stream because punch in. These are fun. I, I have fun with these. And I think, I think the, the folks that are still here, all 150 of you apparently, um, have fun with these. Um, so yeah, I like the chill vibe. Yeah, it, it's fun. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'll fire up a, uh, a Twitch chat about this at some point. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know what I'm doing. This is, I don't know. It's just fun hanging out with folks. Um, so we're going to call it there. Um, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my drink here. I'm probably going to crash. I was going to play Baldur's Gate, but it's 1.30 a.m. here in the Eastern time zone. So we're going to call it there. Um, I'm going to, you're going to lose the audio when I actually go to end the stream because I have to unplug the laugh. Um, so we're going to end it here. Okay. We're going to call it here. Um, so shout out to everyone who joined the stream again, shout out to, uh, the links in the description for the tap kit that we're using for this upgrade series and the, uh, chaotic lab parts here. Um, and for those that donated to the stream, became members of the channel or gifted memberships to others, I cheers you. I'm not able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. Uh, you make this all possible. So we're going to call it there. I'm going to unplug my lab and then my audio is probably going to die a minute or two after. Um, so yeah. Um, it do be how it do though. It do be how it do though. There we go. Enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you on Tuesday. For some VB, 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 VB. English. I speak English occasionally. Busy bot stuff. Yeah. Go play Baldur's Gate. Seriously. If you haven't if you haven't bought it yet, go go play Baldur's Gate 3. It, it's it's very good. And because I know it'll annoy people, go buy a bamboo. 